Hello and welcome to episode 17 of the Pop Shock podcast. I am Dan and I'm here every week. However, I'm joined by someone who hasn't been here for a while, but it's always nice to see his lovely, happy, cheery face. Jared, how are you doing? What's the crack? Uh, what is- like and comment on this video. Bang, right in there at the start. Nice. I was watching some YouTubers and they were like... Cold like, action. Yeah, it could be take someone a while to get it, but if you're watching this on YouTube, give us an out like there. Uh, all, that, all about that SEO. But yeah, um, that's crack. I've been busy and doing stuff. And... Yeah, no, I know you've been you've been busy with like personal stuff, but you've also like watched a bunch of shit and stuff that you're going to talk about, right? Watched a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah, I'll be been putting in the work. I'll be good to get into. I know it's all homework, it's all content, right? Because uh, la- yeah. last night, um, I've get into it, but me and Courtney went to see Nope, and um, anyway, home. She was like, "Oh, but you're going to score it in your in your review," and I'm like, "Well, I'm not actually going to review this one, but like a written review because." It's been out for a fortnight in America. Like we we are, we are getting it late basically in Britain, um, so there's already a review on King Gamer, the website I write for. Um, so I was like, I'm, uh, so I'm, like, I'm not going to obviously bother writing it since it's kind of old news at this point for like worldwide standards. And um, Courtney was like, Oh my god, we went to see a film just for fun. Like you're not going to write about it. <laughs> I was like, Yeah, yeah, we did. So that was nice. Uh, yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, there's there's not a great deal of well, there is quite a lot of news, but there's nothing really major that's happened in the past week, kind of, and movies. So sort of updates stuff. and other stuff like, and stuff that was going to happen previously. Did the first episode of the new Rick and Morty drop? No, but the trailer for, for it did. The, the Rick and Morty oh, trailer did. I'm maybe. sure I saw someone do a breakdown of the first episode. And I was like, Not as far as I'm sure it's, 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 it's starting. Not unless maybe somebody's got it early. But um, yeah, the Beyonce drop or something, just like, bang. Yeah. No, don't, don't get me wrong, um, Trail for a New Season I think it's out this September, and I am looking forward to it. Um, I, I, saw, I saw a lot of folk comment saying that they hope it's better than the last season. I actually really enjoyed the last season. I get fucks, it's a great show. I, I do think, see, I did feel like, what was the last season, was it four or five? Five was the last one. I think it was season three and summer season four, I didn't. I did wonder has it lost its charm a bit, but then the last season I feel it really proved me wrong. It kind of like reminded me why it is a great show, and it really kind of it felt more like the earlier seasons again. I felt I don't know. I think I heard something like that. that. Yeah, it kind of it kind of it kind of came back to form because maybe the previous season was a little bit. Because I remember specifically last away. year, both that and Always Sunny in Philadelphia, I sort of felt the same about both those shows as much as I love both those shows. They've kind of they've always kind of had their moment in the spotlight and they've been on for a while and it's like it's just getting a bit stale and then both re- the the, re- the most recent season of each show has, was brilliant you know and kind of reminded me of why I loved each of the shows so that was a positive did good. it did the last season or was it the season before it was just a little bit like it was very throwaway episodes like they were still fun but like it just wasn't yeah part of the bigger story and they did maybe like the last couple of episodes of the last season really dig into the story again. I like feel like that was season four. Yeah, I want to say that was. I get mixed up. I think it was season four. I don't even know. Like, because when you look on Netflix, it says new episodes added, and I was like, "What?" I was like, "I think they mean because when it's been released." It's yeah, really I think even though it's been on other streaming sites in like, America and stuff, that's Netflix just getting it. I think that's what that means um, mm. when it says that stuff. But yeah, um, we'll definitely talk about Rick and Morty when it drops. But there is. Some video game news that I want to kind of just touch on first. Um, the first piece of big news is that the Hogwarts Legacy game, which is a Harry Potter game, which I normally don't care about Harry Potter games. Well, I, I don't care about Harry Potter media in general, but this game looks pretty cool, and it's I think it's for the same team that does those really cool Lords of the Rings games with the Nemesis system. Um, it may not be actually, mm. quite, it may well look like that, but I'm pretty sure it's the same team. Um, yeah, I was looking forward to this. It's a kind of RPG that you just cut about Hogwarts. I'm pretty sure it's like, I don't know, like 500 years before Harry and Ron and Hermione and all that shit happens. Um, so it's a sort of long lost prequel to the, the films. But um, yeah, it looked like a cool RPG. It's a shame it's been delayed, but hey, it's only it's been, been delayed. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's been pushed you're, back. You were kind of burning the lead there. You were like, I'm oh, sorry, I thought shame. I, mentioned... I was like, what is what happened to it? It dropped. I was maybe I was capture. maybe dropping before the end of this year, um, because there was talk of that being in the running for game of the year, along with games like Elden Ring, Game of Thrones, eh, Game of Thrones, God of War. Sorry, but um, it's been pushed back to February of next year, tenth of February. But do you know what? 
take your time. I would rather play a complete game oh, when yeah, it's finished yeah. and have Don't everything. Because force it out. Yeah, and I assume that's will be pretty in depth. I mean, I think you build your wizard from scratch. You go to all the different classes you choose, all the different skill trees. There's going to be different conversational options. I think there's a lot to this game. So, by all means, take mm. time and then get it done and drop it when it's ready. Um, the other quick piece of very good news I wanted to touch on was just that there was the THQ Nordic um, conference theme thing. Um, THQ Nordic are a studio who have been acquiring a lot of old IP and doing stuff with them. And there's some people complaining that they're maybe not the best studio in the world, they're a wee bit sort of mid-tier and all the rest of it. But personally, I would rather these old IP, like Alone in the Dark, which is what I'm going to talk about, I would rather see things happen with those than just missing partners, you know, and they just lie dormant. I would rather see that people are trying to tell stories you know, and you know, you know what companies are like, they love, they love an, an established IP. But yes, the, the the biggest thing from that stream was the Alone in the Dark trailer. Um, I just wanted to talk about it because I really liked that game back on PS1, the original Alone in the Dark. I don't know really mm. a great deal about sort of the story or the de- the scares but I, what I remember specifically is the atmosphere I remember that whole game had a really kind of eerie creepy atmosphere to it um, even on the old pixelated PS1 days I mean I assume when you yeah. now it's probably super dated but at the time I remember being very young you know five or six years old sitting playing a horror game and with my flashlight and yeah really cool kind of concept and it was also one of those series that started off horror based and then it got a reboot in like 2013 I think when PS3 came out and that was in the wake of obviously Resident Evil 4 and stuff and they tried to make it more action based and it wasn't great so this is actually the second time it's been rebooted but this trailer that they dropped during the conference makes it look like it is going to be more horror focused so I'm up for that it's creepy, so, creepy week I don't never yeah. played it or I don't know I, not, not much about it well I remember sort of some things about the characters and stuff, but not enough to really sort of care, you know, if they change the story or whatever they choose to do with it. Um, is it Alan Wake is the main character? No, Alan Wake's a separate franchise. Um, Alan Wake oh. is its own thing. But yeah, that's, that's another interesting kind of horror IP, but it is sort of similar. Like, I can see why you're getting confused. They are, no, literally they are just dissimilar. I vaguely know the name. As well. um, so both of them, the you're wondering about dark environments with a flashlight. You know, they're slightly different mechanics, oh, but they're along the, the same lines. genre. But um, yeah. But no, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this because watching this trailer, I think what it did do was capture that, hopefully, that creepy atmosphere. So if that can be translated throughout the full game, then it should be cool. Nothing like a release date or anything because I think it's very early on. But yeah, they showed that they're doing it. Um, yeah, but moving on from that, we've got sort of tangential comic book news here. Carl Urban has said that he wants to play Judge Dredd again. There's not that much to say about this, but I just wanted no. to include it because I want to see it. Um, oh yeah, like it goes without saying, it's one of the best comic book films ever made. Yeah, um, and he was great in the role. He's great in it, but like I don't know, it does seem like something. Just someone who, oh, you're gonna fucking yeah. play Judge Dredd again? Be like, oh, I'd like to. I think I think that's exactly what happened. There's a lot of little like things that, that have been said about it over the years. He was he was speaking to GQ, and they said that they asked him about it. He said, "I would certainly be interested to revisit the character because there's such a great depth of material there from the 2000 AD comics." For yeah. for a long time, they were talking about doing a a TV series. Um, kind yeah, of I think on... that was even in the last two or three years. That yeah. there was talk. I think like there was a petition for a sequel. I remember that there was like a, an online petition. Oh to get yeah, like made. Very, very early on. But um, the, the the writer of um, the the writer of it or something the creator I can't remember something like that it was a couple of years ago was like oh yeah I'm definitely going to want to like I'll, I'll never stop saying I want to do it but. Right. Means yeah. Happen. yeah, I don't know. I hope so. I hope it gets another another run because I really really enjoyed that first movie. Some really mm. cool shots with the slow mos and stuff. Yeah. Um. Okay, gotcha. Moving it in the big two. There's only a wee tiny drop of Marvel news. Um, Rosario Dawson though has sort of put her foot in her mouth slightly. Um, she put a tweet out saying that she was excited to be working on. Working with John Berthold and the Punisher again, or something along. Was along it a? Uh, it was a T T U two. Sorry, she said it in an interview. Oh really? I thought it was a tweet. No, um, no, she literally just. Right. I seen this in the clip. It was a C two E two, which I I've always heard of, but never knew what it was. Okay. Um, thought it was some like R two D two team thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she just 
was on about whatever and she just casually mentions, oh yeah, working with John again, blah, blah. Nice. I mean, I want to see it. I don't know how it'll be handled now that it's on Disney Plus, but I want to see it. Because mm-hmm. um, people ah. are quite a lot of folk are panicking online because apparently they said it's been said that Daredevil and She Hulk is going to be a bit of a lighter version of the character. But and people are like, "Oh, that's typical Disney." But it's it's a She Hulk TV show. It's going to be a light hearted TV show. Yeah, I, I would be. I would be. Well, there's a lot of people are saying that that's a big part of Daredevil. It's not always dark. Yeah, really and it would be shit, weird to have a you know. Rates blood-covered hero walking about and She-Hulk like it would have clashed with a tone I think so it doesn't just because they've said that about She-Hulk it doesn't mean that he's going to be that way for Born Again like Born Again can still be yeah yeah a heavier, they did not say show, something, like. something, some new project is going to isn't, isn't going to like Deadpool is officially not going to be I don't yeah. think that like they're big enough now they've got enough characters they can do and they've they're varying what they're doing yeah. all around so like well, the, the I other it's an issue the other rumour is that they're doing Midnight Suns, which is quite a dark storyline yeah. because they fight like Satan basically or Mephisto or whatever, and it is sort of all mystical, kind of dark devil worship stuff with Ghost Rider and Doctor Strange and Punishers involved, which I've always thought strange. Why is Punisher in there with the mystic parts? He? Yeah, he's in the comics, yeah, along with Midnight. Like the and... team is pretty... I remember reading a pretty cool story. Well, maybe it wasn't cool, it just seemed cool at the time, but it was like Ghost Rider, Punisher, and Wolverine going up against Mephisto. Oh, that's cool. And I think like, it was drawn by John Romita Jr., but like, they were all just staying in the same B&B. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird. They were all just like having dinner with this woman and who ran the B&B. And it was just like, like they kind of knew who each other was. And it was like vibes and whatever. Like, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Um, I think, I think I actually might have read somewhere that it was actually, it was supposed to be something different, or it ends up. It was actually a really badly written story, but right. you know, I'm looking at it from kids' eyes back in the day. Yeah, it seemed pretty cool to see them team up. Um, the thing though that makes this sound more legit is that Rosario Dawson then put up a thing on Twitter, basically saying that she'd been slapped in the wrist and given out trouble, and she was like, "Oh, I should really not believe everything that I hear and whatever." So she sort of tried to cover our tracks a bit, which makes it seem like it is more likely that it's happening. Because I feel uh, like if it wasn't happening, would she have said anything? I think a lot of this stuff, it's like it's a little bit of both. It's like they do say stuff that they're not supposed to, and then they're mm. like, "Oh, here, look, you're you're an actor. Just fucking let this drop. It'll build up a bit of hype." I, I'd be very wary of any of this stuff, really. In most cases, apart from that great fucking moment with uh, Don Cheadle and Mark Ruffalo, <laughs> <laughs> or Mark Don Cheadle is like visibly pissed off. His off. eyes are like, Dude. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But again, they're actors, like you know, like. Uh, I think we were talking to someone before, even who was like, had mentioned that they'd literally been paid to link something, or you know, a lot of that stuff. Like, I don't know. I got look, people are people that you know, things slip or whatever, but I don't know. I, I a lot of that stuff. I'm a bit wary of like how much of it actually is a slip up, yeah, and how much of it is just like here, just fucking casually mention this in the interview, because yeah, I don't know. I don't trust them. Another thing that. Um... Hasn't really been spoken about but to do with this story. Rosario Dawson's future in the MCU was kind of questionable because she was also part of the Netflix universe. So if she's still speaking to Disney about projects, and I guess that's good news for for her character, the Night Nurse. Hopefully, she'll make it any any Disney Plus shows yeah, as well. I wonder if she. I don't know the character really at all. It wasn't didn't two characters hold the mantle, and the other one was Christine Palmer. Yes, there there, there was two Night Nurses. Yeah, I believe there was. Um, yeah. I can't remember her. Was it Claire? Her character's name? I can't remember her character's name. Possibly, I don't know. But um, yeah, I, I like Rosario Dawson. I'd, I'd like to see her in more Marvel stuff, and I definitely want to see John Berthold's Punisher yeah. again. So she's really good. Hopefully, I'll be, I'll be seeing her in Trek Street. I'll come back to that. I might do a little segment on my uh, New York. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll fight. Have you got anything to say about the Marvel stuff for me? Because the rest of the news is quite decent. Um, based. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, without really noticing the, just the fucking that I Am Groot series of short films just dropped there well I don't yeah. know when it dropped but I watched them there the last night how, oh. how, how is it? fun annoying excuse me Coke Zero the, should the, the, they're, not, podcast. they're not they're uh, not like super relevant to the overall thing right which is why I've not really all. Like, yeah that's, that's, that's why I'm just like that's, they're, nah, not, they're, not, that's, they're not meant to be like yeah. Um I think they're kinda of in place of like Disney does Simpsons shorts on thing. But they're right. fun. 
Like right. they're just they're short, they're cute. It's very Groot. Um, one annoying thing is you literally have to click all of them. You can't just it doesn't just automatically hit the next one. All right. So you have to get up. At, like they're only about five minutes long, and then I think they might all be written and directed by the same woman. Right. Well, I'm, it's a foreign name. I wasn't sure of it. It, it looked like the woman's name, but maybe not. Um, yeah, because the credit they're about five minutes long. The credits are all about two minutes. Right. But it doesn't automatically play the next one. So mm. you literally just have to go back up. And then I when I was looking at Disney Plus, they weren't all just in one section. So oh, I right, was so like scattered, sort of. Right. Okay. Not necessarily, but like they were there with other Guardian stuff. Right. And I'm still not even like I am pretty sure because I've looked at the Disney home screen a couple of times now and it's like I think I've seen them all. I think it's only like four or five. Mm. Um but yeah, yeah I'm just five, they're, they're, yeah. they're not yeah, they're like they're literally they're kids stuff like. Yeah. There's a really nice one. Uh, there's one cameo in it. Um, I guess no. I, I come back to what. Well, yeah, the, what I've been watching is pretty big. But there's a couple of things I want to touch on. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I like. Nice. Um, yeah. So Joker Two, fully I do, or whatever it's called. It's got a budget of 150 million, um, which is way, way more. It's triple of the original's budget um, mm. which is a bit of a I don't know d- doesn't need it because the first one was great because it was low budget and it was small scale um, well great it was uh, it was good <laughs> musical I don't know. yeah well apparently that's part of the reason because it's get uh, the stars are getting more money Joaquin Phoenix is getting 20 million as is Todd Phillips Lady Gaga is getting 10 apparently um, and the musical sequences are quite com- complex, apparently, and obviously getting yeah, I stuck people like coordinators. And stuff and yeah, yeah. And what, 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 what are your thoughts? I know that you're not a DC guy, but the fact that they're making us a musical does that interest you at all? I'm not the biggest musical guy. Mm. Um, I like reads and like the first one. Mm. So you don't, so probably just not fast. Uh, yeah, I love like I love Walking Phoenix. So mm. not against Lady Gaga, I don't dislike her or anything, and I don't. And I wouldn't even say necessarily I'm indifferent to her, but like you know, she's not a big draw for me. Um, yeah. And if it's rev- I, I'd be very surprised if I went to see it in the cinema. Mm. Um, if it's reviewed well, whatever, I go watch it. But uh, or I watch it when it comes out. But well, I don't I, know. I, I, even if it is like very well reviewed, just what I felt about the first one, mm-hmm. I can't see Todd Phillips doing something. Like even if it is a musical, which I'm not the biggest musical fan, I watch a musical if it's in front of me, but. Well, yeah, at a push, like, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't, I'm not really too, yeah. So, last week, I liked the episode below, but me and Chris went over the absolute shit show that is DC um, and Warner Brothers and the Discovery merger and all the the future of these projects and uh, absolute headache. There's far too much to even touch, to even like recap it. So just go and listen to last week's episode for the full in-depth discussion. But at the time, we did mention that we weren't sure what was happening with the Batman. Um, that was my main worry. Like, I don't really give a shit about most of the projects, you know, like if they cancel the Shazam sequel, I, I couldn't care less. Do you know what I mean? But I'd like to see more of Matt Reeves' Batman. Um, but Aye, so at the time, I think last week I actually said that I was that's when that was a bit concerned about that and Peacemaker. I want to see more Peacemaker as well. Um, mm. It was after the podcast, I think the next day or something, I seen that, I don't know if it was Matt Reeves, or someone said that, no, the project's still planned to come out, still planned to go ahead. However, it's since been said again that the Batman 2 has not yet been greenlit and the next movie will be years away. Um, I mean, the plan was always... After that first movie dropped, I remember Matt Reeves speaking about it, and he was saying he reckons the sequel would... He's aiming for about 2025 for the sequel. So that technically is years away. Do you know what I mean? That's not... The fact that it could be years away is not really news, to be honest. Um, I just yeah. hope, I just hope it happens. I just hope it gets green lit. Like, I don't care if it takes an Yeah, I kind of thought like they already just like announced it like as soon as the first one came out. But it wasn't. No? I don't think it was an official announcement, but... Matt Reeves said that he, he was planning to do a trilogy. He's got the idea for a trilogy in his head, or at least three movies. Pattinson wants to do another one. It made money. It didn't make as money as much money for the company as like Joker did, but it still made made more than its budget. You know, it, it still made Warner Bros. some bank. Nice. So I would make sense for them to do another one, but who knows what's going on with that at the minute? It's just so fucking crazy. Intro, like, just I don't know. Be less shit with fucking doing stuff. Um, like just cancelling things that are good, or like, it just seems like an absolute like. I always go back to this, even uh, my 
nerdy friends staying there last weekend at the Dublin Comic Con, and just like they've had all their characters since the get go, and they're an absolute uh, just copy. Like, and of course, as they're saying, I think I've seen that meme where it was around the time the Batman came out, where it's mm-hmm. like it's what two thousand when the first start, Chris, whenever the whatever year the first Christopher Nolan came out or. Is it even Christopher 2000, Nolan? 2005? It's 1989 and I'm watching a darker, grittier Batman. It's 2005 and I'm watching a darker, grittier Batman. Yeah. Same kind of thing, but it's like, DC have a new five-year, ten-year plan. DC have a new ten-year plan. DC have a new ten-year plan. What's, like, what's kind of interesting about it as well is how much... <laughs> they, they've done that with their comics. DC have done that with their comics lately. They keep rebooting the universe and they're, they're not... It's just they're not doing it very well. It's messy. They keep seeing they're rebooting it for the sake of clarity, and then within like a couple of years, it's an absolute mess again. Um, and I think if you're into comics, you'll know that DC are becoming famous for rebooting their universe every like five years. It's it's now seeming like it's rubbing off on the movies. But the same thing's happening with our cinematic stuff, and it's just it's like how how did you just not learn from that not working with the comics? It's yeah. yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't breathe. <coughs> I mean, it's it's difficult to fish because obviously Warner Brothers aren't involved with the comics. You know, it's dealing with movie studios is totally different. But it's just quite funny that both kind of types of media with these characters is just an absolute mess. <laughs> whether it's the comics or whether yeah. it's the movies, it's like it's it's crazy. Um, it's a shame it's because there could be a great universe there. There could be great stories told if you got good creative people to work on them. Why they don't just let that happen? I don't know. But hey, I don't understand how they could mismanage it so so much. Like, uh, look, I'm not obviously I'm not, the, I'm not a DC fan or whatever, but their characters like just fucking cop onto yourselves, like yeah, it's a waste of property, like yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. My 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 buddy, um, another juror, uh, is always giving out to me for not reading DC. Like he bought me the DC Frontier. Mm-hmm. Part of, uh, I think I mentioned on a previous podcast. Um, but he's like saying DC Comics are great, but like, I don't know, there's already much that they're doing that's making me that enticed to watch them. Uh, not read them. The thing about DC, well, to be honest, it's kind of the same with Mark. I don't know. We both are big too. I'm not really interested in a lot of the new stuff. Like, for me, especially with DC, there's some amazing DC books, but really in the last five years, has there been anything that I would put up there? Do you know what I mean? It's like there's not been any like kind of modern classics Lightning's supposed to be good for it? a while, and yeah, I don't know. And I sort of feel the same about Marvel, like especially with our Marvel's crossover events recently. Like every single one's just been a disappointment. Ah, uh, yeah, you don't want to be going to the crossover events, so that's just looking. Um... But I think that's quite a good barometer of looking at Marvel, though, as just our kind of general quality. Because back in the day, Marvel crossovers they meant something, and they were quite good. And things like Fear itself, uh, and I don't know, the Siege, and uh, I don't even think Fear itself has looked back on that fucking fondly. Like, I really, I, I, I really like Fear itself. I like it a lot. Well, I think like for stuff, Daredevil. I can't remember who's doing Daredevil. It's the same guy who's doing Batman, now, isn't it? Was it Chip Zdarsky? Yeah, yeah. Uh, He's a good writer. Punishers. The Punisher is supposed to be very good. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly so. Um, Mortal Hulk, I thought was fucking fantastic. Um, I don't know. Some people are. I don't. I'm, I'm obviously a Spider Man mark, but like, um, I'm enjoying the new Spider Man. Uh, X Men. I don't know. It's got a, it, the Koi era has got its uh, detractors, but people are fucking are obsessed with it too. Um, yeah. Other than that, I can't think of anything else right now. I know the new Judgment Day thing is like people are a bit meh. About it, but um, I think you gotta just go for the soul. Like even that Daredevil thing that was that kind of got pushed into being an event when it wasn't originally planned to be. It just came mm-hmm. out of the Daredevil book, Dark Rain, is it? Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah, especially with the big crossover events, they're just I, things make money. I wouldn't take that as a judgment of the comics that the company produces. I just personally feel that recently in, in recent years. The comics that I've kind of current comics that I've been reading, kind of contemporary comics, the best stuff that I've read has been like independent stuff, like outside mm. of the big two, and even outside of like some image stuff's been pretty good and whatever. But I don't know, I've just I've not read it recently that I've been like, oh, that's that's one for the, you know, but that that'll go down in history. That's a kind of modern classic. I've not I've not felt that in a long time with the big two. There but, hey. was one that was supposed to come out there, and I kind of forgot it was supposed to come out, and then I was like, oh fuck, is that out? And then I googled it. Uh, I'm trying to find the, the artist's name. It could be the artist writer. 
but um, um, he is. I don't know. Maybe a... it's also. I think there's also a wee bit of superhero saturation for me. Over saturation. Exactly. Um, quite a lot of the stuff. Uh, Steve again, Cole, the more contemporary name? stuff I've been reading recently has been uh, kind of crime based like a... stuff. Um, serial killer and detectives serial and stuff. Killer. I don't know. Just comic books are sort of done. Uh, I was just looking up this artist writer uh, that uh, Steve Scroach, S T E B E S K R O C E. He was doing a team up book because there used to be a book with the thing mm. called was it Marvel Team Up? I think it is, had its own name, Two in One or something like that. But the book was called it's Clobber in Time, okay. and it was fucking great. It's some really weird like. I seen a couple of images, like there's one where it looks like I don't know his thing being affected by some shock wave and like all his rocks are kind of coming out. And you can see the under layer cool. where he had like all cuts down into his rock because you know he is flesh underneath the rock, um, which I always thought he was rock the whole way through. Um, but yeah, I went to check it out and it was like it hasn't been cancelled just yet; it's been delayed. Um, so I was annoyed by that, but that was one Marvel book that I was like really interested in looking at. Um, yeah, I guess with the rise in, I guess we're going to learn into comics here, but the rise in, like, image, people are far more interested in doing their own self creator things. It wasn't even about to say, what's the other one? Substack mm-hmm. became really big in the last year. Mm. So there's a lot of avenues for artists to get in, and then there's a lot of, like, I guess, I don't know, so I'm sure they were aware of it for long enough, but, um, you know, you're hearing lots of news of Marvel and, like, especially writers and artists working for Marvel getting kind of even like getting paid very little but then getting paid even less than they thought they were originally going to get paid because they had to do a certain amount or the character had to be in their own project mm-hmm. um, yeah so there's still I think there's still a crowd of people going in because there's people breaking out they'll get into Marvel then they go back and do something for themselves but yeah also still work for Marvel. totally uh, um, or you know whatever DC um, yeah yeah, uh, we, I think it's kind of it's, it's everything's freed up now because your man Zeb Wells is it Zeb Wells yeah, is doing like no Zeb Wells is Spider Man. Chip Zdarsky is doing Batman and Daredevil at the same time mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think there's stuff there, but I think it's just you know it's, it's maybe a bit harder to find it. I mean, no, don't get me wrong. We've seen that a lot when we were working with the old website we were working for was those artists like Alex Packnadale who was doing Hulk but he was also doing his independent stuff which was really cool and then there was Danny Lohr who we interviewed and they were doing work on King and Black but they were also doing again their own thing so yeah it's, you, you do see that a lot sort of especially it's quite nice to see young talent that are sort of able to get their foot in the door at these big companies and then also be able to do their own thing um, I don't know I don't know how it goes for like establishing yourself sort of on the inside of like these companies because people like Jim Lee and stuff that end up becoming like creative directors and Jeff Johns and folk like that. I don't know how how that sort of the career ladder works nowadays, but um, it seems to be a lot more kind of freelance based rather than like I think back in the day it was more like loyalty. It was like you know you, you work for this company or that company. I mean, also folk like Jeff Loeb's written for both, you know, and Tim Sale yeah. and. You know, like whatever. Who was the but, first one to do that again? There was one, there was one particular. Um, who wrote? Some, who, wrote who wrote Crisis on? Who wrote on Infinite Earths? Because I feel like whoever wrote that has probably worked on Marvel. Um, oh no, but I think there was actually a, a, there, there was a particular like I don't know, is Watershed the right word? Where a particular artist or writer? Yeah, because he Marv Wolfman, the first I'm to do sure it. He's worked on both, but um, let me have. It was one that was the first to do it without um, having to use a pen name. Right. To work. It wasn't George Perez, maybe. Or maybe some of the older guys. I, did, 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 um, did, what's his name? Did Jack Kirby never work with DC? Mate, oh, I called it. That was well after. Jack Kirby. <laughs> it's Jack Kirby. He was the yeah, first apparently. after he left Marvel. Oh, well, I don't know. He I didn't just... work in both of them concurrently. Like. Oh, right, okay. You're talking about concurrently? Right, okay. Yeah, Because yeah. yeah, I just Googled pen name. I just Googled the first um comic book person to work for both Marvel and DC and it said Oh no no, he left Mar- he Jack Kirby. Marvel. He fucking Marvel. Um uh, Jim Starlin, he worked for both. Maybe Jim Starlin and then George Perez is the next one that's coming up, so Perez maybe. Well I think well one of them in particular, because there was people doing it already, but one of them in particular maybe it's Marvel. And yeah, it must be one of the older crew. Um 
was the first to do it without having to use a pen name. Mm. And they were cool. just like, yeah, so you do it. I think it could have been Perez, like, if, I'm, if I'm right. right. I could be wrong. Uh, look, that's not that important. Um, so that's comics. But uh, yeah, but look, it's a, it's, a, it's a good age. Like we've got lots of independent stuff coming out. Uh, different, like the, the comics are in the industry is growing a lot, mm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, in different ways, like mangas probably even probably seen the biggest growth. I think in the Western world, or maybe more so in America. But like, was it something like last year comics grew by sixty percent from what they were selling the year before in America? Right. Like so, Aye. pandemic. Like I fucking. I completely got back into comics since the pandemic. I, I wasn't mm-hmm. really. I was a very. I was a completely lapsed reader. I hadn't read anything, read anything new before the pandemic in years. Like, yeah. I'm gonna skim some stuff. Or to, to be honest, I'm kind of out of it at the minute. Um, I've not read much. I think I've read like two comics since I moved into this flat. Um, and I've, that's has been in a year. So maybe like I've read like two in the last year. Okay. Um, I'm always n- picking away at something. It's not for any. Never... It's not for any particular reason. To be honest, it's more just because I've just been busy with work and. Other stuff. Yeah, um, I'm not reading that many new stuff. Like I'm reading Spider-Man. I'm buying Declan Shelby's Time. Let's just back to see the name of it. It's copy over there on the ground. Uh, Time before time, but I'm not actually read. I haven't read any of it in ages. Like so, mm. so he was actually at Dublin Comic Con there, and I was like, I go up and say hello, but like, uh, what's my like? I could get him to sign my co- the comic, but like, I haven't read enough of it to talk to him about it. Right. Uh, I could tell him that I'm getting a custom made by his. I think I showed that in the chat. The well, yeah, yeah, it's nearly made now. Uh, right. A banshee custom figure, but I was like, there's no point in just tell- oh, getting that. Again. And yeah, there was someone at him every week or every time I went near him, so I was like, fuck, I better say hello. Um, he's a new thing coming out actually called Old Dog, I think. Cool. Where he basically said, What's the old guy from uh, Breaking Bad and not the guy in the wheelchair? Um, uh, mate. Um, yeah. He basically said, I want to write a book that basically has Mike in it. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay. Those real haggard Clint Eastwood in fucking the racist, anti racist one. <laughs> Clintino? Yeah, that kind of thing. That kind of old man, gruff bastard character actor kind of yeah. figure. Uh, so that's coming out soon. Uh, yeah, but I think there's plenty out there. Just takes, it probably takes a bit of work. I, again, I always sing his praises, comic tropes, just hearing his stuff, um, his recommendations, and then comic pop. You'll find, you know, if, 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 if like there's plenty of stuff coming out, it's just most of the more interesting stuff seems to be the um, well, like, it's also a very big wide pool when you start going to the indie stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's very easy to say, Oh, it's the indie stuff, is, but that's coming out of all different places, like mm-hmm. different smaller companies, bigger companies, and stuff. yeah, totally. Um, here's the new story, it just won't die. Um, I'm sick of talking about Ezra Miller, but there is. We sort of spoke last week about how it was insane that all these other DC projects like Batgirl and Supergirl and stuff had been cancelled, and yet The Flash is apparently still going ahead, given all the behind the scenes drama. Um, and last week, Ezra Miller has officially been charged with felony burglary. Burglary? Really. That's hard, it's hard to say in a Scottish accent, that word. Um, apparently, Miller stole alcohol from someone's house when they weren't present. They turned up and their booze was missing. Um, I'm so sick of talking about it. But the bottom line is that DC have came out and said that they basically have given Miller an ultimatum. And they've said that they've got three options that they're considering. One, if Ezra Miller gets professional help and explains their behaviour, the film will be released with limited press. Number two, if they don't get help, the film could still be released with minimal publicity from Miller and then the character will be recast in future films. And then number three, if the situation gets worse, in other words, if if Miller gets arrested again, I guess, or does something worse, then Warner Bros. will just scrap it all together. It's... It's not. It's, it's I mean, such a weird crap, situation. Films of Michael Keaton, Batman. Yeah, I know. How, how do you go for getting the iconic kind of character actor back in the role to just not having him at all? Like, I don't think Michael Keaton gives a shit because he was asked the other day if he'd watched any Marvel or DC films and he was like, nah. But I don't think he really cares, but the fans do. And I do think there's probably money that they'll, they'll probably lose if they don't. Like, you don't tease. It would be like Marvel saying they're bringing back Downey Jr. and then just being like, oh, no, we're not anymore. Like, <laughs> you don't tell yeah. fans that unless you're going to follow through. Do you know what I mean? Wasn't it he just... also, I heard someone say he was actually supposed to be in Aquaman too, but then. I think so. Re- Replacing with Affleck. That's how they got... Yeah, like, that's, that's, even that, like, how the fuck is Affleck back? <laughs> 
<laughs> like for the last six years we've been here and he's on and like off again. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I don't know. He's just marrying J Lo's fucking he's like, I oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I know, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> I I, uh, I I hear fuck it. I, I like as much as I don't like talking about DC and I don't mean to say that, but like this thing is never ending. It's I know. I know that's the thing. It's the it's the ongoing but again, thing. Uh, DB, like, it's been reported that DC. But that's not an official thing from DC, is it? Um, this was a report according to Kim Masters of the Hollywood Reporter. So, is not like sources? Like, well, maybe there is. THR's a source. Saying. It's been published on THR, IGN, um, the Hollywood Reporter, and Fandom. So it's been published a few different places. But, Possibly, yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the, it's just, it's just, it's right just right a now. strange situation. I don't know and why. It's just getting worse, so. Just put the horse down. Do you know what I mean? Just put it out. I don't see day. how they can't, like. Yeah, surely it's going to cost more to superimpose someone into it, but, like. You could, it's been done, like. I know, mm-hmm. I know they play two characters in the film, mm-hmm. but. I'm sure you could throw some money into that to make it work, like. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's different. Maybe they have, like. Well, was that thing that they the recast um oh fuck please, kevin spacey the, the oh, all the money in the world was he the main character in that or no he a supporting character he was a supporting that? character yeah maybe they have like a okay we can't do this with the lead character yeah kind of thing. yeah because the same and two lead characters army of the dead when they replaced i can't remember who it was some creep they replaced by tignataro um but again yeah 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 again she wasn't the main character but yeah um, yeah, it doesn't cost as much. Yeah, um, you feel like you could do it, like just, just do it. Like I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, I do want. I get. I want to see. I want to see all the projects that have been cancelled. Like I'd like to see the Flash movie, and I, I would. I would watch the Supergirl movie and the Batgirl movie, but it just doesn't seem worth all this hassle. It's like just either just reboot your universe or just let stop worrying about the whole connected thing. Just stop. Stop with the, the Snyder continuity. Like stop with Miller and Momoa. Even though I like just Momoa and Affleck. Like just let that die and move on. Do you know what I mean? Either just do that or yeah. do you know what? I, I I feel like I repeat myself for last week. Go and listen to last week's episode. I feel like I've already said all yeah, this, I, but all this. But it, like this news hasn't changed either. It's just slightly different. Like, yeah, like, yeah. They, well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the dregs, really. the dregs here that we're bringing up are just the things that sort of were left unanswered last week, like with the Batman and, and Ezra Miller. The last, yeah. um, the last sort of DC superhero thing is that Idris Elba was asked if he was working with Marvel or DC next, and he said that he's working on something really big for DC. Could this be the first tease for a sequel to Suicide Squad? Maybe during James Gunn doing another Suicide Squad movie. I, I would assume we're going to get one because that movie. I don't think it done like gangbusters, but I think it done quite well at the box office. So I can, you would assume Probably that. Enough. Like I think they're awful fucking stupid if they just go by the exact numbers because they have to be able to go. Look, this is a good film. Yeah, we'll well, make it a better or more. Yeah, or it was a, it was an okay film. <laughs> I didn't love the Suicide Squad. I thought it was okay. Best fucking DC extended universe film there is, like. Um, nah, I'm disagree with that. What with the Batman? That's not DC's Avengers universe. Alright, alright, so you mean within that continuity? Um, I like Man of Steel. I still like Man of Steel. Uh, it's a bit boring, but I, I like it. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, so just the last bit of news before we... But even still, fucking Man of Steel, like, that's going to be slightly better. Um, I, don't even, I don't think it is better. Um, I think it's grand, but it's... We should, do you know what we should? Neither. Maybe we should do that. I don't know if maybe you're probably not going to want to be part of it, but we could maybe rank the DCEU and just see what's oh, absolute worst of the anyone. worst. I'm, this is probably, I've, I've talked about the more than ever once. Like, like, um, I think it's let we should let it die too. Like, it, yeah, would, it would, it would be a re- actual valid if you want to do it. Yeah, I'll have it would be, it like, would be a race to the bottom. You know, it would, it would be a race to the bottom, I think. Uh, um, <laughs> So, the last thing was just that Vince Gilligan has commented on Breaking Bad because next week is the last ever episode of Better Call Saul and oh. therefore the end of the Breaking Bad universe. Someone asked him, would he do anything else with it? Would he do a Gus Fring series, a Hank series, something else? He said that yes, he could do more with the universe and maybe someday he will if he feels that whatever comes next like original-wise and he'll come crawling back. But as for right oh. now, there's, there's more room to grow. Uh, or not, oh, right. and there probably is. 
meme. I saw it literally said he wasn't. He wasn't what? Doing anything else with it. No, that's what I'm saying. He's not. Yeah, that's what that's the saying. He, he's saying that he, he was basically saying that he's wanted to do something original um, and different. But if whatever it is doesn't work out, then he probably will do Breaking Bad again. Basically, it was the the long short but of the, the statement. The, fucking, the news clip you gave me is Vince Gilligan isn't planning on returning to the Breaking Bad universe again. Yeah, <laughs> which sounds the opposite of what you just said. No, but he said he said that he could do more with the universe. So you know there is potential to do it. Maybe, and then he said maybe someday. Done. Maybe someday he will, especially if he feels that whatever comes next, then he'll come crawling back. But for right now, there's more room to grow, and I feel like it's time to do something new. So mm. I'll Stop see. Breaking Bad season. <laughs> I'll see whatever it is because, regardless of your thoughts on Saul and Breaking Bad, see just the guy's continuity, the way he thinks ahead, and the way that his mind works, yeah. like it's insane. Well, I, I only watched the first season of Saul, and I did enjoy it. It was very slow, which is generally the kind of thing I like, and I've heard a lot of people say it's arguably better than Breaking Bad. The, the, final, uh, the final season that's on just now is some of the best t- TV I've ever seen. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Oh, I'd love to, but just I think it's been so long since I've seen the first season and it was so slow that I, it just feels like an awful lot of work to catch up on it. Yeah, oh, no, yeah. I uh, need as, a new drama series to be watching, but generally when I get to a certain stage of night, I'm like, I just want to watch a film and give me a conclusion. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, as, as a, a commitment, a like, uh, yeah. yeah, 100%. Five um, tra- seasons now? Four seasons? Five. Um yeah. Chris is Chris is going through it at the minute actually. But yeah. Um yeah, so that's that's all the news that I've got for this week. I don't know if there's anything else you want to touch on before we move on to the next segment. Um nope. so this is probably going to be quite a, a lengthy segment anyway, because like we were saying, you haven't been on in a while, but you have been busy doing stuff. You've been you've been to double Comic Con and you've watched stuff. How was how was Comic Con <laughs> first? Uh, okay, so ba, 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 ba. I went to my first Comic Con ever, like only in two thousand nineteen. Even though as long as I read comics and being a nerd, uh, just never fucking thought to go. Mm. Um, and like, and I guess I've been living in Dublin for fucking ten years, and it's never crossed my mind. Uh, well, yeah, I'm nearly here ten years exactly. Um, but literally never crossed my mind to go. Um. I think sometimes when you see the listings of who's actually there, you're like, oh, they are awesome. Yeah. Go see them or whatever. Uh, it's always just some random, like the majority that were at the one I was at there was like just, well, it was like Robocop and there was Queen Maeve. Right. But like, like Felicity, Felicity, Felicity. 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 Felicity Day. I, I never knew I couldn't say Felicity. <laughs> uh, Felicity, 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 Felicity. Fucking hell. Uh, Felicity Day. You know her? She's like, She's a big and a nerd. And sort of I feel like, like I know the name. Ginger, she's like created her own shows and stuff. She's made right. different shows. Okay. She's a big name and nerd, but like, I yeah. didn't really watch anything she's in, so she's not a draw for me. Um, the voice of Mario was there. Uh, not a massive Mario fan. Didn't bother me. The Robocop guy, yeah, it's cool. He was there, but I was like, I'm not paying to see. Like, I'm just everything, because I'm going, which you want to go to the end of the section, I'm going on a trip to New York start of next month uh, so I'm trying to not spend a crazy amount of money um, yeah. so you know I just wasn't ever spending 60 and I maybe would have liked to get a like Queen Maeve if it wasn't like 60 euro yeah it's just uh, the price I just thought I find that a bit crass I don't know like when I was I've been to a couple and there was one I was at and Kenny Baker who's since passed away was there and it was just sad like it was this we Kenny Baker R2D2 the original actor oh yeah yeah I mean, he was about 90. He was sitting in a seat, obviously a special seat because he's a dwarf. Um, he had, like, oxygen next to him that he wasn't using, but it was there, like, just in case. And it just felt crass. I was like, why are we still kind of pushing yeah. this guy around? He actually might be in a wheelchair. He might be in a wheelchair, I think. And it was just depressing. Sorry? Oh, at the time. Yeah, yeah. This is, like, five, six oh, years yeah, ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was just it was sad to see it. And there was people queuing to speak to him and stuff. And... Like, he was being pleasant, and the people were being pleasant that were speaking to him, but I just thought, as, if that was your granddad or something, you wouldn't want that for them. Do you know what I mean? It's just a bit... It's a bit odd. Like, I don't know. There's an element of it. There is, there is... Now, so, the first time I went, basically, my cousins down home won something on a radio station, at one of our radio stations here, and it was just, like, tickets to loads of shit. Mm-hmm. And one of them was a Dublin Comic Con ticket. Right. Uh, and it came with a photo pass, and it came with... A VIP photo pass, I think. I can't even remember how it worked out exactly. Um, but so I was like, fuck it, I'll go. And 
the photo pass, so I was fucking delighted because Spike from Buffy was there. Fuck and I'm a massive Buffy fan, particularly of Spike. So I went there. It's all like great cosplay. I got loads of pictures with cosplayers, same as I did again this year. Um, and that year, I, that's I brought it up before Deccan Shalby, as I said earlier, Deccan Shalby was at the most recent one, but he was also at the one that I went to a few years ago. Mm-hmm. That's where I got my original piece of Banshee art by him. I got him to sign a dead, do another little do- drawing of Deadpool and uh, dedicated to my past brother. And that's actually me. That's cool. Me and his masters, uh, so we're both sticking our fingers. We're both cool. Um, but when I, when I got there, fucking the, the attendants told me that like he goes to a certain place to do photos at a certain time and then right. doesn't do it. So like I got there and someone told me the fucking wrong thing and then I don't know why they were so helpful. Maybe it's because my ticket was down as a VIP ticket, mm-hmm. but people were going up to talk to him and then they got me to go on some secure line to go up to him. Right. And he came out and talked to me, and I got to just go like, oh, I fucking really like Spike, Spike's blah, blah, blah. You know. Told him the whole reason why I loved his character or whatever, and he was like, yeah. what was it? I was on about like, um, you know, there's a prophecy in Buffy. It was always kind of led to believe it was for Angel, but then it turned out to be more about Spike. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, that time you fought him and you bet him and thing, because they had a fight over the prophecy. And then it's like, bet him on his own show. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> uh, sorry, so that's the first time I went, ever. So, and then I met who lived down in Galway, who I, I'm not saying grew up with, but in her 20s, you know, we're my nerdy mates and we talk about comic books. One of them seems to just fucking hate everything now. <laughs> uh, but the other fellow, like, you know, he's the guy who got me the... DC book? The Frontier book, yeah, and like, he reads comics still, um, religiously. Um, but they were coming up, and then my mate, one of my mates, one of the two lads brought his daughter up, and... She did a great fucking Eleven costume, really, actually. Oh, cool. Played her, I guess, I assume her mother, or she did it herself, but she liked the suspenders. And like, <laughs> I kind of was like, oh, do you not have a blonde wig? And then it was like, it took me a while. I was like, oh, Eleven doesn't have a blonde wig. What about it? Like, it's only in, like, one season. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, she did the little a bit of, like, fake blood on the nose. It looked like we were like, have that fake blood in your pocket because we were walking around town. Yeah. Don't someone think we just fucking hit you up. <laughs> um... And yeah, went in. Uh, my first day, so it was huge queues going in. Uh, went in. I actually met my my eldest nephew. Met him on the way in. And then went in. Hung out with him for a while. There was like a Dublin group of wrestlers, promoters there. Uh, wrestling promotions. They were doing like wrestling on the live show. Um, walked around with my nephew for a bit. Got a picture with Chainsaw Face, Chainsaw Head. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I haven't read it. My nephew has. We just. I, it's a manga, it's, right? It's a really cool cover. Yeah, it's a really cool cover. Like yeah. Chains off her head and chains off her hands. Um, walked around. Uh, lots of merch and stuff to buy there. Some photo opportunities. It wasn't really an awful lot to it, really. Um, but just my main thing, I was around getting photos with cosplayers. Uh, some really good ones there. Uh, some really inventive ones. Um, yeah, I had good fun. My friends liked it. Uh, my mate was like, who's big into comics, like... Uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't come back for another five years. I was like, yeah, fair enough. Mm. Um, then the next day, I brought my youngest nephew, who's about nine. He fucking loved it. Good. So we were just going up getting. He was happy to go get pictures with people. I found out he's an absolute, he's an alien nerd. So right. I didn't know that. Um, which we'll come back into it later. Uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, it was a good crack. It's, I guess it's the main draw for me, I think, would be the cosplay. Mm-hmm. Um, if I was going by myself, I might have gone to more of the talks and stuff. Right. But like, especially if you're going with a group. Yeah, I'm kind of done in like two hours. Like, mm. it's not much, you know. We are uh, we're we're going to the Edinburgh one this October. Uh, me and Courtney and another couple yeah. of fours are going, so that'll be a laugh. Um, yeah, I mean they're 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 fine. They're they're good fun, I guess. Um, there's cool stuff to buy if you've got a bit of cash. But obviously, you weren't you weren't going crazy with that, but yeah. Um, I seen some photos, not just for you though. I seen some photos in the other fan groups as well for the 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 Dublin one, and I looked. Ah, there was some cool cosplay and stuff. yeah, there really was some very good quality ones. Um, my fucking, I was that close to oh, I don't know if it was that close, that close to buying a Toby Maguire Spider Man from like I don't know the first or second film, mm-hmm. and I just held it like and it was. It was like 60 euro, which is, I was like, oh, I probably would have, if it was there to the second day, I would have bought it, but like, because it's funny, the guy was like, oh yeah, you actually seem to know how valuable it is, because it's, it's some random kid bought it, um, right. and we're going to man to buy it from. But like, uh, the articulation, and like, the science of it, like, was just, 
it's the, the newer ones I have now. It's like right up there. Like it's right. amazing that it's like over twenty years old. Like that's cool. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. And then, uh, as far as uh, comic book people, there was Zack Snyder. No, Scott Snyder. Yeah. Uh, there's some other artist that I didn't know. My friend who reads DC knew. Couldn't remember who he was. Right. Um, Shelby again, and then a couple of other Irish guys. Uh, nice. Yeah, that was cool. Um. Do you want to go for one then? Something you've been watching? No, no, I was. Um, I, I mean, I can, but I was going to. I was going to ask you actually, just to hit as way with everything else that you've been watching, because I know that you've been watching the. You were watching a couple of zombie films recently. Um, stuff that oh, you've been meaning, yes. stuff that you've been meaning to watch for a while, right? That you were sort of on your watch list to get round to. Uh no. So I randomly, I'm always like, prior to the pandemic, I never really, was really a horror guy. I used to. Uh, I used to like the idea of being a horror buff, but it was an absolute chicken shit. So I watched very little horror. And then with like friends from college, we used to do like watch alongs. So we'd, mm-hmm. like, we'd sync up and watch and just like live Facebook chat when we were talking. Yeah. But, so I ended up watching a lot of horror during the pandemic. And um, I fucking love zombie films. I've actually, I just picked up Resident Evil 2 there for the first time in ages. And I got to, I just got to the nest and the for Leon's first thing. Mm-hmm. But, um, Found some zombie film. It was The Night Eats the World on Prime Video, and I fucking loved it. it I haven't even heard was, of it. It's based on a fr- it's French film based on a French. What is that? What's that from? Final Fantasy? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I think I'm humming that all the time now. I, th- I, I think it is. I think it is. Final Fantasy that much. Um. Yeah, so it's basically like it's it's pretty low budget. It's not like it's 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 an indie film, but it's based more as like a drama. It's um a guy who goes to his gir- ex girlfriend's house party to pick up like old tapes of his, and he goes to his ex girlfriend's house to um pick up tapes, and then. He like bumps into so there's a big house party going on and like when he's going into the back room to get the tapes, some guy with like a Polaroid camera like runs into him and kinda of hits him in the head and like he takes a drink so he's got like a slight head head injury and it takes a drink and then he just like ends up passing out on the couch and then he wakes up and just there's fucking zombies everywhere. Um <laughs> so he's like there is zombies in it. There's a French actor who I I've never seen in anything, but he seems to show up he, he's in some film where he's got like a green suit and like kind of long red hair. I could probably just Google him. Um, but like I've never seen that film. It always reminds me. What's the one with the, the really quiet French girl? Emile. Emile. Emily? Oh, Amelie. Uh, Amelie. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. it got, it, so this French guy, he was only a small part in it. I'm trying to get sidetracked talking about him. But um, he just. Uh, look, it's. It's zombies, but the vast majority of it is it's him going around this apartment complex and foraging for stuff, being smart, uh, just trying very small things. He does so. This the one French actor I, I knew from it to see. Uh, like he, it's just an old zombie who like is trapped in the elevator, and he just talks to him like, and he's just like, it's kind of very like uh, why the I don't know. The la, uh, I am legend. Okay. The novella that it's based on. Yeah. Because he's one man and they're all zombies. Right. Um, and it's just really, I fucking really enjoyed it. It's straight up there as one of my favorite zombie films ever now. Cool. And um, that's me watching lots of zombies. Nice. And then I got into a bit of a streak. Mm-hmm. I watched The Sadness, which is this so, South Korean, I think. Yeah, The Sadness is on. I've been meaning to watch that for a while. Um Mostly because I had about a certain scene in it that's extremely messed up, and I was like, I want to see that film. <laughs> um, but on Shudder, maybe? I haven't, yeah, I think so. I haven't got around to it yet. But I heard of it in like March because it was at some film festival, and it's supposed to be like people are going, like, Oh my god, it's one of the goriest films you've ever seen. I also has a really cool poster. Be. I like that red poster of the guy holding yeah. is that an axe? It's a cool poster, yeah. And the, 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 the night that he's the, the night. The Night Eats the World has a really cool, like, so I, I remember sharing pictures of both of them. They both have these, like, The Night That Eats the World is just, like, another very red. Right. Uh, and then, like, a black silhouette on it. Um, which, actually, another thing about The Night That Eats the World is it's, like, a very restrained 28 Days Later. All right, okay. 
because they're like traditional zombies, but there's not as much gore in it. And it, it like the zombies aren't a huge part of it. And right. The sadness, they're not zombies. It's a virus that just turns people into the worst type of people ever. So okay. like they want to just, as I was saying before, it's like they want to forward, kill, torture, say horrible stuff. Right. They oh, so they still have them. their. You can still speak. Can oh, still... they speak. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Be one of the more fucked up things about. Right. It. Okay. They know exactly what. Well, they know it's kind of like it's like a mutated form of rabies, basically. Uh huh. Where they know exactly what they're doing, and they, and even there's a, there might be a thing where someone just rings up, or like the the fucking mayor comes over the intercom. It's like, oh, the men come out into the street so I can cut your penises off. <laughs> just like. Right. It just goes mental, like um, it's. It's good. I wouldn't. It, it actually. I was really looking forward to seeing it, but mm-hmm. I kind of anything like with zombies. I like it to be like traditional zombies, and I think by the end, it's just, it, it's it, it goes a bit generic towards the end. But it is still a very good watch. Like yeah. Um, and then I watched actually two two films with the same writer. I want to get his name up here, um, because I was basically on a kick then for like dr- indie zombie stuff. And okay. I heard about this thing called the Battery, which you can actually get on Netflix. No, YouTube. All right. On YouTube, the full film. Yeah. It's written and directed by Jeremy Gardner, uh, who stars in it. Also, it's basically two guys who they were in a softball league, or they were actual baseball players. And in this now, again, not that like the traditional zombies, but there's very little actual zombie stuff in the film. Right. It's very much an indie drama and there just happens to be zombies in it. Okay. And like the zombies are so fucking, uh, what's the word? They're so unthreatening. Like there's one, so it's interesting. So the, the, the Jeremy Gardner plays the one guy and he's like, he's the one who's doing all the heavy lifting when it comes to the killing. And the other buddy, um, doesn't want to kill you. Like he's just not killing anybody. He's like, you're going to have to fucking do this at some time. Like, I don't know how long yeah. it's going on for your man is like reluctant to actually do any of the zombie do any of the zombie kill him. not so right. much because he's afraid i don't know why but he just isn't doing it um and then this thing where they don't the other guy wants to live in a house mm. but the other fellow was no very early on in the outbreak we lost like uh, all our friends and family because we we're in the house mm-hmm. and that comes back into it and like both things are more about the both films are more about the survival of zombies but like again very little actual zombie action just Really mm-hmm. fucking like the both just like indie dramas really that just happen to be in the zombie world, right? And the same same guy Jeremy Gardner, one step away from zombies, did. I want to get it up here. Another film that I watched then, after midnight, which is like a monster film, but again, monsters hardly in the film, right? A relationship drama, um, right? So yeah, just like good indie stuff like that that I've been watching. I like that when the 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 threat is a sort of. It's not the point of the film. I quite like when they do that. Yeah, not at all. Like, they're, they're, like honestly, after midnight, the battery, the night eats the world. Sadness is kind of a little bit different because it's more of a traditional kind of. It's kind of along the lines of fucking twenty eight days later. Mm-hmm. It's more of a gore fest thing. Like, but the battery after midnight and the night eats the world. You, unbelievable. Like in my opinion, unbelievable. Just very human stories. That just like well, min after midnight's more of just some random monster. But yeah, the other two, just I really fucking enjoy them. Cool. Um, yeah, really good watches. Um, I, could, I highly recommend. Uh, nice. Other than that, kind of left the center. Uh, the most recent episode of Atlanta that's being put up on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. Are you up to date with Atlanta? Have you watched it? At all? I've not watched a minute of Atlanta. It's been on my list for the last five years, and I've never got into it. I won't say anything about it. Something happens in season three that I guess if you're kind of in the, in the comfort of watching the, I think even if you're in the pattern of watching the show, it still fuck you up because it's just it's not like fucked up. It's just something happens in it that I'm like, what in the fuck? <laughs> uh, and I, it's it's something that kind of like touches the wider world. Uh, I won't say anything else about it, but like. It's just, it's a fucking great show. And it's like, um, so it's like, it's drama, comedy, surreal. Mm. Gets more surreal as it goes. Some episodes don't even follow uh, Donald Glover's crew. Donald, yeah. Sorry, because I was actually also watching Predators. <laughs> um, 
yeah, some of them don't even follow his crew. Like, so he's Don Glover plays. He's the manager of his cousin, who's a rapper called Paperboy. He's played by. He's the technology guy from the Eternals, and he voiced Miles Morales' dad, some Terry or something. Uh, Brian Tyree like. Henry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, he's in Bullet Train, actually. Yeah, he was great in Bullet Train. Train. Just going to say that. Uh, yeah, he's very good. He's very. Yeah, good. he's good. Um, yeah, just like there's one episode there where actually, do you remember Shameless? Yeah, the English version. Remember the Northern Irish, the McGallagher, the McDonough's or something. Remember the Northern Irish dad who was faintly a badass and he was done on heroin. He was sticks to heroin. Yeah, 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 sort of. Um, yeah. He's just in like so. This, so this one episode they're they're playing in Budapest. Like, but the third season, Paperboy's kind of like a bit. He's coming up. He's like he's doing European tours and stuff, hmm. and he's like getting recognised in the street all the time. Um, but that guy, Paddy, Paddy, was he Paddy Gallagher or no? Was Gallagher's was the main shameless family? Yeah, yeah Gallagher's main family. Yeah. Okay, McDonald's or something. It was like a Northern right. Irish name. They were, I think they were like former IRA or something. But um, he just plays like like a Hungarian manager of a venue, right? And Paperboy's phone goes missing, and first there's like there was a Make a Wish kid at visiting him, mm-hmm. and then they have to go out and check the Make a Wish kids like he's been brought out in a stretcher because he's in an attack or something, and like Donald Glover has to go out and be like, did he steal uh, his phone? <laughs> <laughs> and then it turns out then that like their main culprit is. The, the guy from Shameless's nephew who's just like he was at the venue to do an interview and right. just, but like it's fucking unreal like the, the guts of the episode is paper the big guy paper uh, was it Brian Terry Brian Terry Henry Brian Terry Henry the guts of it is just him interrogating this very peculiar like the, the guy from Shameless is like oh, I think he's 17 and he's like my uncle hasn't seen me in 20 years i'm actually 33 <laughs> and he just it's just so left of center i don't even know if that like especially with the shameless guy playing the manager of the place i don't know where this young kid's from right it's about my age but he just has this unbelievably peculiar performance and it's just going against uh paper boys kind of gross mm. adage to give me my fucking phone and it's just I oh, man is like getting a guitar and just singing a song to him and it's just <laughs> Oh man, like there's even an episode there where they're they're taking these like trips in Amsterdam and like they just have these moments of like random sur- surrealness to it. So like your man, like these kids recognize him on the street and he's just like coming up off this whatever fucking weird biscuit and um, he hides in a house from the kids and he can see them. There's just like a mother, like a middle-aged mother and then her elderly mother and then the baby in the pram. Mm-hmm. And these teenagers who were just like chasing him down the street they're just walking past and they just grab the baby of the doll out of the pram and start fucking it between each other and throwing the football <laughs> and stuff. And just like, it just always has these weird little moments like that. Some things are very straightforward and drama, but then yeah. they'll just like follow, like there was another episode where all white people who were descendants of slaves had to owe people who were slaves to their ancestors millions of dollars. Like, right. that just, they just, they just broke it like it was a new story. You know? But they just, Followed this one guy and like he lost his, he was nearly about to get back with his ex wife and she left him and he lost his job. And like, just man, then it's like some black woman just keeps showing up and is, You owe me three million. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just fucking mental, unbelievable show. Yeah, but a particular thing happened in the most recent episode that blew my fucking mind. Right. And it's not just in the show, it doesn't really work like it works within the show, mm-hmm. but it's more of an outer world thing that's pretty mental. Um, a little bit Irish, that's all I'd say. Uh, yeah. Well, talking about being Irish, I guess, um, there was something that happened last week that I didn't bring up because I wanted to speak to you about it. There's a trailer, just came to me, there's a trailer for the Banshees of In- 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 Sharon, In- Sharon, um, uh, Mark Banshees of Inner Sharon. Yes. I don't think it's a real... I'm gonna go. I don't know if it's a real place. Um, but this was the film that was filmed on in your hometown right sure, it was in Mayo say, my home county yeah. um, Ackle, Ackle Island the trailer looks looks great I mean I'll see it anyway because it's Mark McDonough um, but yeah it looks it looks like a really kind of funny quirky performance from the two the two from uh, in Bruges again as well um, looks so weird and... I know he does he looks bizarre what's going on is it just he's just shaved or what <laughs> like 
Yeah. It's just, it I don't was... know if he's supposed to be playing the male person, or is it like. The... I don't think Inna Sheeran is. I think Inna Sheeran is a fictional. Like, it is set in the West Coast. Mm-hmm. A remote island off the coast of Ireland. Like, there's Inish Boffin, there's lots of. In- I don't think. Unless I get my fucking Irishness. Oh, can it, girl? <laughs> fucking Kerry, Kerry Condon is in it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kerry Condon's in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friday from. Yeah, Inish from Coast. Marvel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she's in Burke Coast, though. Uh, I don't know as well. Is she? Yeah, yeah. yeah she's yeah, she's yeah, Mike's yeah. daughter in law. Ah, right. Because I remember, like, the first time watching Age of Ultron, going, or, or like, I actually screenshot it at one time. She's like, Tony's flying in, and Ultron's in this church, mm-hmm. and then she just says, "He's there in the burst. He's there in the church, boss." Yeah, your or your your man's there in the church, boss. Oh, fuck, <laughs> that's so Irish. Like. I just spotted it there because I was looking up. I don't think in Sharon is a real place though, unless I'm fuck. I don't think I don't want to get. Yeah, it's, it's, every time I'm, is in Sharon. No, I don't think it is, unless I'm. Wrong altogether. Yeah, no, it seems to be just a fictional place. There's lots of the places around there, like around on the west coast, similar like Inish Baffin. Mm-hmm. I, I forget them all. Um, yeah, so uh, I actually did it in college. Those are the fun things. I did like the whole class on all of his work, uh, mm-hmm. Jonas, like going from his plays up to his films, film work. And I think we, I think Seven Psychopaths was the last thing on the on the course. Right. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of seven billboards outside. Whatever the three billboards. No, did you know? I, I like. I really liked it. No, I, I just thought uh, Sam Rockwell's character changed unnaturally. Really? Uh, in eh. the film, I he just I, hard with monster, and then he's like, "Oh, I'm actually not racist anymore." Now it's great. I thought his performance was was great. Oh, I thought he was incredible. Well, performance is great, but the character didn't make any sense to me. I think yeah. McDonald's stuff. I don't know. It, it, it's, it's from my point of view, like. What's it? Isn't his brother the, the guard and the yeah. priest or something? Or the I've only seen guard? I've only seen the guard. Yeah, like that's the kind of stuff that as a generally as an Irish person just gets real fucking old, real fucking annoying. Yeah, like, yeah. It's all this. Oh, sure, geez, I'm fucking mad. Yeah, that kind of attitude to Irishness. Um, where in Bruges was per- like in Bruges, I think is one of the most perfect films I've ever seen. Um, so many things about it that are, and like it, it touches that line. Colin, but like again, Colin Farrell is so natural in it. Yeah. Um, I think I probably told that story about me drunkly meeting Brendan Gleeson before. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Look, I'll be looking forward to seeing it. it, it it's an odd one because it's old. It feel a little bit. The trailer, I don't believe the trailer blew me away as much. I'll still watch it, but. It was quite, it was quite underplayed the trailer, um, but I guess the sort of it is quite a basic plot, I guess, isn't it? Because it's based on, mm. it's based on a play, right? It's based on one of his. It's not. I don't think so. Oh, is it not? I thought, I thought it was an adaption of one of his older works. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, um, I, don't think so. I don't think you do that to be honest, because. I mean, really, well, what? I'm, I'm... Watching the trailer, I don't know about you, but I got the vibe that it could be a play. You know what I mean? Like it could be kind of like eight oh, eight. Yeah. Like it could easily. Well, be... like if you if you went back and um, actually, like that's the one thing I, I like. We were talking about when we trip to America. I'm already Irish going to see plays. I went to see plays when I was in college because I kind of studied theatre. Was well, I did. It was part of me um, thing, but like I haven't really been Irish watching plays in the last while. But his plays are still very enjoyable to read. Mm-hmm. You're fucking in Glasgow. You'd probably get them. People performing them from time to yeah. time, like uh, going over, but like they have seen. this weird, and I'm sure the Scottish theatre is very similar, the English theatre is too, but um, this old farcical kind of humour. But his kind of very into Quentin Tarantino, and it's like this, there's one where it's like they dig these brothers, it's either they dig up one body or dig up two bodies. But there's one scene in one of the plays where it's all told tongue in cheekish, but like. One of the characters is just breaking up a skeleton on stage with a hammer, like. <laughs> right. So it's just like, it's tongue and cheek kind of stuff. So, yeah, like his his theater is very in, in a very interesting read. Look, I'm sure you can probably see any of his plays fucking performed, but especially some of his Irish theater because it it just has that weird off kilter. It's like very traditional type of play, but it just has some very dark humor in it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, this one's kind of hard to read. It's, yeah, it does seem like a very basic plot. Um, I, I'm interested to know, is, are they just going for a generic place in the West? Because, like, Colin Farrell's accent, I was like, what the fuck's going on there? Like, um, 
What what I can appreciate about though, I do feel like in Bruges is a fairly straightforward story, whereas Seven Psychopaths and Three Billboards were a bit more there was a lot more going on in those films. And it seems like in this film he might be taking it back to more sort of stripped down and basic story, you know, kind of yeah. character based. So that could be a positive, you know, maybe it could be more sort of focused on the performances and the writing ra- rather than this kind of complex pr- plot with all this, you know, I don't know, yeah, crossing yeah. over storylines and stuff. So, I don't know, I'll see it anyway, I'm looking forward to it. I, yeah, I and I'm sure we'll, we'll speak about it here when we, when we do. Um, yeah, is there anything else that you've, you want to touch on before we, before we move on? Because I've got a couple to go over. No, uh, I don't think, oh, I started the Walking Dead comic book. Which... Mm-hmm. I never read. I only didn't get that far into it. I liked how we were talking about in the chat how some things are just different to like the like Shane and stuff. Don't yeah. Open or don't dead inside open. <laughs> mm-hmm. Whatever that sign is in a completely different place in the comic. Yeah. And it's not where you expect it. Like you, the comic passes that point of the story where that sign is mm-hmm. in the show. So you completely forget about it, and then you see it, you're like, oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, fun, really expressive art and stuff. And yeah, that was great. Be, just, just staying on zombies, um, which by the time this comes out, which will be next week, probably could already be finished. But just in case it isn't, and you've never played any of the Resident Evil properties, Humble, which is definitely maybe like a, if you can find maybe their Facebook page, is definitely a thing to follow because I've got yeah. deals with comic books. Like I got a lot, like. I think it's all of Sean Phillips and fucking uh, nice. Brubaker. Brubaker's work for like 40 euro or whatever. And then like it's digital, obviously. But this has, um, now there's different packages, but the main basic package, if you want to get everything that's on it, you pay like 29 euro, whatever that is, like 26 pounds, something like that, um, or less. You get, for the PC, the most up-to-date versions of the remakes of two, or one, two, and three Resident Evil, one, two, three, mm-hmm. then you go get four, mm-hmm. then you get five, six, seven, Revelations one and two, right? Resident Evil zero, and 50% off Resident Evil eight, right? Which is pretty fucking substantial. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just I have two and three on my PlayStation and seven actually, and then I have seven on my PC, and I'm trying to save money for holidays, so I haven't got any of that. Um, yeah, just good. Now, if you're hearing this now, it might already be over. We could maybe a day or two left on it. Humble, though, is definitely worth looking at because it's for comic books. That's the first time I've seen it for computer games now, but it's definitely worth looking at. Oh, no, they've, done, they've done games for a while. I've bought a few. Uh, the, the Telltale oh, series, yeah. they did the Telltale series, just talk about The Walking Dead. They did all the Walking Dead games, The Wolf Among Us, I think that Game of Thrones game, they did a bunch of other Telltale yeah. stuff, and I bought the whole lot for like 30 quid. For 35 pound or something i got everything up until i mean that's a few years ago so i don't think i think it was just before they'd done maybe they'd done that guardians game i think it was just before yeah. that so it was like the borderlands game they just did i think the first season of the batman game they did all that stuff um was included it was only like 35 quid but um yeah and for comics it's great too that's that's where i bought the invincible omnibus um i only read the first couple of volumes but it's like it's crazy the, the, yeah, the invincible yeah. the invincible yeah. omnibus is huge plus it was it was an image deal so you were getting a bunch of invincible some of saga some of um i can't remember the other storylines i think it was the is it southern bastards and east of west and a few others a bunch of image stuff anyway um and again it was only yeah. like 30 40 quid and, and you yeah, got all amazing, that so like, like i did i did snap this up even though i have it like i guess there's not much like cause in my head i was like well if i got official versions of two and three i could get mods for them but like mods for like it's not like people are going in making brand new games mm-hmm. but they do some no i don't think they do, i don't think they do that anymore like no, I you get I a think... mod for resident evil 2 for the pc that would like it's new entirely new game with, yeah but i don't know if that exists with these modern games that they actually got that it's that much work i think the engines nowadays are more i think the engines nowadays, nowadays are more strict with that sort of thing it's not just a more case working. of like when half-life came out it was just like in a sandbox almost you know engine and you could just do whatever yeah. you wanted with it and stuff but i think it's a bit stricter now with, with, with that sort of thing yeah with the programming yeah. i'm not and really sure that's stuff, about, but... like now one thing i did play that was actually pretty cool and just verging close to our topic but not just yet um uh there was a mod of Crisis, 
that okay. basically made it like a, a summary of the first Predator film. Oh, cool. So like nice. they ripped the music into it. You went through the scenes of finding the people. Then it's a really anticlimactic ending of right. like, just a model of a predator comes out and just punch him a couple of times. Like, yeah. Really, like, yeah. It's, it, it loses, like, but it's amazing up until that point. Like, it yeah. creates the thing where you take out that fucking group of coke people or whatever the fuck they are. You know, the thing where Arnie lifts up the truck and stuff. Uh huh. Right. Like, you can actually do that. You can push oh, the truck cool. down into like, a camp and the music is spot on. They actually rip dialogue out of the film too like it's really cool in that sense they should yeah, they should get the crisis guys to make a predator game that'd be cool i always yeah, like the crisis unreal. games too but they were decent unreal, um unreal. so um, yeah, yeah. Go on, no no i was, I was just going to bring up just topic games um because i've been playing some stuff recently i finished far cry 6 today which was fine but um i've also been playing something else which i think we can talk about because this will be coming out after the embargo lifts but um i went to talk about Ro- roller drum because oh, yes. you sort of a friend of a friend that's developing it, someone you know, and it was something that I got early for review. Um, my review, as of recording, is actually finished. It's just it's sort of scheduled to be uploaded when the embargo lifts, which I think is Wednesday. Um, hmm. So that's probably when this episode will go up as well. But um, yeah, Roller Room's great. Like I, I spoke about it briefly last week with Chris, but obviously I was under embargo, so I couldn't say much. Um but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, if mm. the if the review is indeed live by the time I've done the edit and stuff for this podcast, I'll link it below. Um, if not, you can follow me on Twitter or find me on King Gamer and you'll see it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just it's a ton of fun. It's kind of exactly everything you hope it's going to be. It's it's yeah. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater with guns. It's Tony Tony Hawk's Pro Skater meets Max Payne. It's all this gorgeous shell sh- weird, that's shaded. That's to be like. That's like what people like from the trailers. Like, oh, that's what it seems like. But like, it's great to hear that it actually seems to be exactly see, that. Like, see, see, the thing is, it's quite a good. I, I don't know if I mentioned this in my review, but it's a good study and it's ambitious and that it's setting out to sort of emulate these classic influences like Tony Hawk's and Max Payne, these kind of iconic games. But it's not over ambitious where it's trying to reinvent the wheel. It's taking what has already been established to be good game mechanics and bringing it up to date and meshing it together and just executing it well. Like it's, it's a quote unquote basic idea executed very well. That's basically the, the, the summary of roller yeah. drum. Um, there is, there is a, it's, it's, an, it's an amazing elevator pitch. I always just, my mate said it first. So like, that sounds fucking great. And like, yeah, since like going way back when I was just, when he just had a, like a, as a small prototype, I've just seen the gifts of it. Like, this is fucking great, and like I'm, I'm happy to see that it just seems to be carried on. The team he's working with seems to just like bring that out exactly. Yeah, it just it feels great to play. Um, you know, like when you you do a backflip off a wall in slow motion while you're taking down, you know, a big mech with a rocket launcher, like you just feel badass. It's all in slow motion. Again, it's all this cool cel shaded style, very comic booky. You've got these rockets coming after you and all the particle effects with the smoke and the explosions and it's just it's really cool, really dynamic dynamic and stylish. Um the the story is quite it's not the most obvious story in the world. Like there's these kind of sequences in between the the tournaments where you sort of wander around the locker room in first person and you're like lifting notes and stuff. So that's sort of how the story is told. Um, there is this kind of like background conspiracy going on where like how the government are sort of using this um, competition and stuff. And um, it's, I guess it's kind of satirical um, on the sort of way that the government do use entertainment for nefarious purposes. Um, I don't want to say too much about the story, but uh, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. Yeah. It's not like told through cutscenes, it's not like on the nose, you do kind of look for the story, but it's there. Um, yeah, the game the game gets more challenging as it goes, but it never felt, I actually thought it balanced that well, because when Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 came out, it was one of those games, kind of like Crash Bandicoot Remastered, you forget that games back in the day were hard as shit. And games over the years have gotten easier. And when you go back to these sort of remasters like Crash Bandicoot and Tony Hawk, you're like, oh, Jesus, this is solid. Whereas here, it never felt, what's the word, like frustratingly difficult. It was challenging. But if you focused and got your shit together, you were able to sort of get on the next stage. So it was never too punishing. You know, it was quite rewarding that way. Um, But it wasn't, also, it wasn't easy. But it was really cool. And it, 
it done a good job of the actual controls are super simple. Like, see, once you get the buttons down, you know, it's easy to do flips and it's easy to do, yeah. you know, all the different things. But then they introduce new elements of like different enemy types or different timers or different challenges you need to do. And then all of a sudden, this straightforward control scheme, you really need to master it to get to check whatever box you're trying to check. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. It sort of it introduces it, and you're like, this is really easy, this is simple, and then it's like, oh no, there's more to it now, or oh, there's more to it again in the next level, and it just kind of builds from there. And you kind of, your, is it your, your bullet time is built up by the tricks you do. Yes, yeah, you do yeah, tricks. Like, even when I heard that, it's like, it's, it's a very it's, simple link, but... It's quite like Doom in that way. Um, no, sorry, Remember sorry. That? Sorry, it's not. It's not the tricks. It's it's not the tricks that build bullet time. The the tricks build ammo. So if you run out of ammo, um, ah. you do some flips, you do some grinding, and then your your ammo comes back. That's what it is. Um, the health is picked up off of dead enemies, and then the tricks. I'm try- the the bullet time. I think that's just a regenerate meter. I can't actually remember. Yeah. But um, what's really cool is if you do if you do a trick. Or you do like a, a, they call it a perfect dodge. You know, if you're about to get shot, you jump out the way right in time, and then you trigger the bullet time. You get like ultra bullet time. So like it's like one hit kills, and again, it's just even more stylish. Like everything becomes this kind of two tone. It goes to being this super colourful. To everything's kind of blue, but the enemies are orange, and it becomes this kind of really cool two tone kind of like almost mm-hmm. mon- mon- monochromatic thing, just for a split second. And then when your bullet, your ultra bullet time runs out, you're back in. You know, and it. It sort of breaks the pace to like a slow motion, and you can kind of get like if there's a certain rocket launcher enemy that's been doing your nothing, you're like, right, I can finally turn around and sort of get him because he's get been pissing me off for the last ten minutes. And then when you get him, it rushes back in again, and that's you. You're kind of the momentum picks up again, and then all of a sudden there's more enemies to fight, and it's just it's got yeah. great energy to it. It's quite and energy wise, it reminded me of Rocket League a bit. It's got that kind of frenetic arcade energy to it. Um, yeah, and there's different environments that are cool. The way they use the environments are interesting. Um, yeah, th- there wasn't much that I, that I didn't like about it, um, but I'll put it on my review, obviously. But f- yeah, for the most part, it's it's a really enjoyable, arcadey, fun experience, which is challenging, but never too challenging, which does everything that it sets out to do pretty well. There's nothing that it's like... Very good. There, I don't know, there was, there was nothing that, that angered me about it or nothing that I kind of rolled my eyes at or nothing that I thought... Oh, this is this is tropey, or this is unoriginal, or this is frustrating. You know, it, it felt fresh and fun, and yeah, just well made game. So yeah, check out the review. And oh, and the other thing as well, like my god, is it worth the price of admission? Like I got it for nothing, obviously, because I was reviewing it. It's like Twenty quid, I think. It's it? yeah, yeah. If you you can preload it in Steam, which I would recommend, or you can, I think you do it in PlayStation Store as well. That's the only thing. It's not coming to Xbox. Which is a bit of a disappointment Initially, for. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's for a time. Six months. Well, I don't know if they've officially given a date for Netflix, but because I, I was trying to Google that for the review, but um, they have said it's going you to be like Netflix. A, there, did you? Sorry, um, <laughs> Xbox. Um, as a timed, as a timed exclusive. But yeah, that was the other thing which again I hope to do in the future. The other thing that I thought was sort of missing from it. There's no online um, element to it at all. It's purely yeah. single player, and it would be fantastic to play with a group of friends like see when you're playing it yourself and you're having fun you're like imagine this over the mic yeah. you know with a few beers and from what i heard be... right, it was um it's uh it's a big step to be making i was going to say i know that it's not easy uh, to set up sort of servers and online co-op and shit like from what i'm hearing how well it's doing like i, I could see it definitely being if, in line with a sequel i think get more I Either if they do a sequel or if, if the original game gets sort of patched with an online mode, because you now like GTA releases an online mode after single player mode, yeah, etc. It's not. Um, if that was to come to it, I would I would really bump it up a notch for me. Like I think, spoilers from my review, I think I ended up on like an eight out of ten. Um, mm. I think it would just bump it up that extra point and maybe extra point and a half to like a nine point five if it just had an on- online multiplayer yeah, element. Yeah. It feels like a huge benefit of the game that's that's not there and i was like oh it's kind of yeah. disappointing but I, and I'm just what is there is great what is there is great what i'm hearing from other reviews too is like that it's been received so well mm-hmm. not that i know there's going to be a sequel but like generally like from what like i have very because i remember even bringing that up like <laughs> very lightly in a very like maybe in what six years ago i think it was even i remember listening back to that episode Bringing it up, and I was like, because you know the example of it being an art, like a an indie game, 
But mm-hmm. like then from here, like from the podcast, from yourselves, and from like May, it's then here about how that's how kind of Rocket League started. So yeah, that's but, probably what has Rocket League at that level because it has a player versus player. If this had that too, yeah, you know, it would just be like it's also an example of because I know it's a fairly small team and I've been playing another game for review. I can mention I've been playing it, although again I don't want to say too much because that's not until the end of the month. A game called Scathe, which is developed by a Scottish studio, and again very small team. It's amazing how these two games, both Scathe and Rollerdrome, right? They aren't even out yet. I'm playing them like a month in advance and yet everything works. I've not run any one glitch or one even like visual, mm. visual glitch or control or input glitch or anything. Okay, there's you can maybe say, oh, well, there's no online functionality. And that, quite often that leads to glitches and I get that. But see what's here in these games. I can, I'm can, i pretty sure I can say that for both of them. It works. And see when yeah. you're then playing games from companies like Ubisoft and EA, these huge multinational Massive conglomerate companies, companies, and the game doesn't work as it's supposed to. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. how can that be? How can five guys yeah, in a room make something like... make something energetic and functioning, and yet this company that's, you know, get millions of employees can? It's, it's, yeah, it's insane. But anyway, that's another, yeah. that's another discussion. Um, but yeah, Roller Drum's great. Um, I would highly recommend it, and awesome. I'm glad that I got to play the it. The music's supposed to be pretty good too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, kind of electronic soundtrack. Again, that sort of put me in mind the Rocket League, like the way you're sort of playing to the music almost, like maybe not to the extent of like, I don't know, well, it's I've not... I've already played, I've seen the lads playing it before, but I never actually had a game myself, but I was like, well, I like football, so... But League. it's just, it's not the same because Rocket League's an online game, obviously, so it's different in that sense, but just the energy, the frenetic, the fast-paced music, yeah. the kind of stylish, flashy right. style, it just, it's got that vibe to it, and the fact it's kind of arena-based. But um, yeah, really enjoyed enjoyed Roller Drum, so I'll, I'll like that review below. Yeah, so the other thing I have been sort of watching, um, I went to see a couple of movies, Um do you know what? I'm going to talk about just a dumb one that I watched last night first. I watched a movie called Day Shift, which is a vampire hunting movie on Netflix. Um, Jimmy Fox is the lead, and Snoop Dogg's in it with him. Oh, yeah. And Dave Franco. <laughs> um, it is I exactly. Last night. Yeah, it is exactly the type of movie you think it's going to be. And do you know what? I quite enjoyed it. I'm not going to lie. I came in I after. Liked it. I thought it was just a bit dumber than I thought was possible for a film like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's extraordinarily like, dumb. I, I remember just like giving it a quick like Google or you know that first first like 20 minutes of any film. I'm like, what? I'm reading reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, so it was like it's an incredibly stupid script. I think it fucking is. Like, yeah. Just oh oh, you peed your pants. It's like, yeah. Yeah, there's there's several peen pants jokes. There's a there's a part where a character gets their head cut off and then they're still alive and they're chasing their head around the room. Like there's very kind of like basic slapstick stuff here. But see, last night I came in after seeing Nope at the cinema, and I wanted something really dumb and a kind of palate cleanser. And it was I must admit it was perfect for that. I really enjoyed it. Like I had a few drinks, yeah. I did switch my brain off, and I had a bit of a laugh at a dumb film. Like that's if that's all you're looking for, then I would I would recommend it. I'd say do you know what it's it's no bad. There's worse you can do on Netflix. Put it that way. Um, but yeah, so I seen I seen Nope. Although I'm not particularly going to go too deep into it because one, you've not seen that, so I don't want to spoil it for you. But two, me and Courtney are going to do an episode specifically on that for for our consideration. But I will say I really enjoyed Nope. It's great. Um, it's yeah. I don't know. It's just uh, Jordan Peele. I just I, I love following his career and I love seeing the potential of where he can go. And yeah, yeah, he's just he's such an exciting filmmaker, and, and Nope's really good. Um, but an interview with that's all I'll say for now on it. The smartless guys, right? Yeah, Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and Charlie yeah, Williams. I've I've subscribed to that podcast a long time ago, and I've not listened to one episode. I think I've got a couple it downloaded. Goes. They, right, they've a lot of ads. And yeah, like they were advertising McDonald's. I was like, what the fuck, yeah. <laughs> uh, but they were advertising with uh, which is um, there's a I think I've mentioned before there's a clothing brand in America called. Faherty, my surname. So obviously, immigrants have went over and done well for themselves over there. But they <laughs> did have an ad for Faherty for one time. So just to hear Will, I might have mentioned in the pop before, but just to hear Will Arnett say Faherty, Faherty, Faherty. <laughs> which is kind of weird. Oh, um, yeah, it's a good interview because um, it's, it's it's kind of fairly obvious from the trailers what it's about generally, isn't it? I don't think it's a, it's kept secret. Anymore. Uh no, no, there, there's not. 
Oh, no, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to give anything away. We're not even no. We're just from going by, simply by the trailers. The trailers are pretty clear what it's about. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, but in the Smartless interview, and Smartless is just kind of a stupid name. Doesn't mean anything. Um, not to say oh, this is smart, but will our next guest? Nope, not of planet Earth. And uh, Jordan Peele's like, yeah. That's it. Oh, was he the first one to say that? Because I've heard that also. Well, on... they might it might become more apparent in the film or whatever. But yeah, when was that interview two or three weeks ago? Right. The fucking I think it's been kind of apparent for like, but the, the initial trailer uh-huh. didn't make it clear. It was something uh-huh. in the clouds, but it was never yeah. clear what it was. So the original, still, the original trailer, the original trailer movie. never made it clear it was aliens. But then people, I remember people in the comments saying that Nope could stand for Not of Planet Earth. Like that was a theory. I think after the first trailer, and then after that, they became a bit more open with their market. Okay, so maybe that's maybe that's the terminology from saying, but like on that podcast, or next yeah. Podcast, but um, that's nah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go into it because I don't want to give anything away. Um, just, I, I, just that. There was more of a comment on that podcast than anything. Yeah. Um, what else? What else have I seen? Um, I've seen everything everywhere all at once again. Um, it's still a seven. I'm sorry, it's still a seven. It's it's a good film. Oh, what do you give? What do you give Doctor Strange in the universe in the house? Um, probably the same. Probably about seven. Fuck off. Fuck off. I just, I don't know what. Nah. I, I like. Nah. I like. Nah. Everything I've read at once. I just. I don't see what everyone else has seen. It's not. It's not the same as fucking Doctor Strange and the, the universe in the house. I, I don't. I wouldn't really compare them. Like I'd say everything at all. Everything. <laughs> uh, everything everywhere all at once for me. Is more comparable to like a Stephen Chow film. It really reminds me of like Kung Fu Hustle or Shaolin Soccer. That's kind of where. I would really? put it, yeah, that, that's what it puts me in mind of. Um, and don't go wrong, I love Kung Fu Hustle and Shell and Soccer, but I would actually say I prefer Kung Fu Hustle to everything everywhere all at once. Like, it's just, Man. it's an okay, interesting, well-made film with good performances and interesting film techniques. It's not the Back to the Future of this generation or the Matrix of this generation or whatever other comparisons or that I've heard on the, on the internet. It's a good and indie I, film. I just exactly well, see. Yeah. I, I think that was my problem. I, I think I seen it too late. I think if I'd seen it when it came out and it was just a nice surprise, I, that would have been plenty. That would have been enough for me. But I was kind of yeah. promised this life changing experience that was like an instant classic, and I didn't. I still don't feel I that. I think it is. Like I, I think like, when I say it's just an indie film, like, it is a good indie film. But like, I don't think it's, it's really comparable to like it's slightly comparable to the Matrix. But that's about it. I think. I don't know. I'd not, I, 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 I can see like, actually now that, now that I think of it, it's a little bit like Back to the Future in some way, I think, but not as, I think, not as mainstream. I think these comparisons, I think the comparisons, I mean, that's like it's Reddit, so it's obviously all hyperbole and stuff, but um, on on Reddit, I think a lot of people are just hitting up these comparisons because those are like seminal films of their day, and I don't Yeah, well, feel like Back like, to the Future, especially when you go into like, they are technically going into different timelines and stuff so it's kind of like other universes and they're meeting versions of themselves that are quite different mm-hmm. or maybe just versions of their family that are quite different there's a lot of that in it yeah. um, and the Matrix not as much like a very it's like a house with a kind of similar layout but it's not but like when I think about I think about how much Matrix blew my, blew my mind the first time that I watched it. The first time that Back to the Future blew my mind the first time I watched it. I never felt that with this film. That's and that's what I was kind of expecting with, how, with, the, with the online build-up. I think it's just the internet just overhyped it. I think that's the main problem. Like, it's it's a solid film. It's Like I said, it's like a seven. It's just not a mind-blown sort of, I'm going to show my kids this type movie. It's not up there. It's, it's more forgettable than that, I think. Like, it's... I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll feel different uh, in years to come, but just, I don't know. It was just, it was so overhyped and so kind of, I was expecting something like, I was expecting a perfect movie. I was expecting something really incredible and it was just good. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. It was just good. I don't know. Um, not what I've been watching, Well, I guess it kind of technically, um, fuck, I think his name is John the Bear, but his, his, his YouTube channel is Hear the Bear. He is, he, because I'm going to New York at the start of next month and... This guy's like a New York YouTuber 
visiting New York, 10 things to do, reviews at different places, advice on where to go, blah, blah, things to do for free, cheap beef, blah, blah, reviews and guides to different, like, it's not exactly walking tours, he, you know, he does, he does longer form videos with other people, and maybe he does it at different points, but it's usually, like, 10 minute videos, just things to do, 10 top 10 things to do in uh, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and stuff, so I'm right. staying lower Brooklyn. Oh, you're staying in Brooklyn, right, okay. Yeah, lower, down a bit, like, I'm not... Not actually, I don't think it is lower Brooklyn, it's like, or middle Brooklyn, or whatever. Uh, so I'm down a good bit, I'm like, probably like a 45, probably like an hour on the subway to Manhattan. Okay. Which is a which is a trek, but I don't know, I was just like, my first time going, I was like, I'm going to try and get somewhere cheap. Didn't realise how far out I was, really. Because I, one thing I found out which is kind of weird, New York is roughly the same size as Dublin, and it's like, New York and the main guts of the boroughs, five boroughs, is roughly the same size as Dublin right. and the commuting areas. But obviously New York is fantastically built up. Yeah. Um so I'm a bit out look, fuck it. It's my first time going over there. I was going for cheapness. I'm not crazy far out. Like I'm not like Yeah. Forty five minutes in a subway. Like that's not I don't know. That's not, some thirties here take an hour, like. I'm considering actually staying in Brooklyn the next time I go because both times I've went I've been like, right, we need to make a point to see something other than Manhattan, and I've not been outside yeah. Manhattan. I've been twice, and yeah, both times yeah, I've yeah. just spent the whole time. Well, I've been I've to Jersey. We've, we've been to Jersey. Yeah. But, um, I've probably seen a lot of Brooklyn. I want to go to see Jersey. I want to go see Queens. Queens is kind of along the line to Brooklyn. So, in some ways, and then at the same time, I'm staying there for like fucking 11 nights, and my accommodation is under 500. So, nice. You know, I, I'm, I'm one of my friends, I want to punch him square in the nose. Oh, that's so far out. That's so far out. It's like, Fuck off! It's already booked. Like I'm not doing anything else I, about it. I think it's different as well because are you going yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's totally different. Like, see if it was if it's just you, then it's down to you, sort of what you want to do on your holiday. You don't need to compromise with, with you know you just do what you like. Oh so, yeah. I so want you to bring anyone. So I think that's I think I think that's totally different because I think if you're there with a group, um, you sort of need to. Also, cater to the crowd, and not everybody's going to want to do an hour's journey into Manhattan every yeah. day. Whereas, if you're there yourself, then who gives a shit? Okay, do you know what I mean? Cover up the, uh, the GPS. Is that what you're saying? There's a. There's a Russian bakery in Brooklyn, which is meant to be incredible. Um, again, we've tried to go twice and we've not been. But um, yeah, if you're staying in Brooklyn, I would I would look that place up. And see the uh, so Manhattan at the top there. There's also there's a there's a bar in Brooklyn called the Kill Bar, which is Tarantino themed. Um, but oh. I think it might be closed. They closed during COVID. I don't know if they've reopened. So, but anyway, yeah, um, things have changed since. There's, there's, co- there's, what I'm saying is there's, there's cool shit that I want to see in Brooklyn, and I think staying outside of Manhattan next time would kind of force you to see that stuff because when you're there there's so much to see in Manhattan that it's so like pricey, yeah. it, well it's sort but of like, like I'm, see, I, I, so I was there for four days the first time and five days the second time and you've, you're you trying to see short. four days is very short for going to New York it might have been five and six I can't remember but both times it was less than a week put it that way um, and uh, we were trying to see a lot in the time we were there so taking yeah. the time to go and spend a day in Brooklyn or something I, okay, I want to do it, but it means that I might not see something in Manhattan I want to see. Do you know what I mean? So that was why we yeah. felt it felt like you were kind of wasting a day because of the travel time and, and all the rest. Because I, I was trying to do the helicopter tour. Like you can go to Jersey and get a chopper and it'll fly you around the island. Okay. See, the, see the, the, the commute just to get to there. It was taking like an hour and a half. And then the trip, I mean, it cost a fortune and it only lasts 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Yeah. And, then, and then you need to spend all that time getting back into the city again. It's like a half, at least half a day's worth of time when you're there just to do a 20 minute flight. That's why, again, yeah. we, we didn't go for it. So you sort of need to, I mean, I'm quite I'm quite into my itinerary, so I was planning out doing it in the minute and stuff. But um, you do kind of need to be quite wise with your time. You know, you, yeah. well, there's I a lot to I'm see. Not, like, because there's like city passes and stuff. And yeah. I was looking into them, but like yeah. one of the city passes I seen was like whatever, 130, and you can use it for nine days. But I was like, I was looking at the stuff on it. I was like, I don't fucking want to see. Like, I don't want because I've been this guy has been really good for videos. So he's like, I seen a video of his from 2020, and it was like, like look, these are the four observation decks. 
top two. I think his top one was at top of the rock. Yeah, Rockefeller's great. Um, then that's great. The Edge, which is the new one, which is I've not been up that, but yeah, well, it's cool. Doctors, so I've that booked. Right. And then there's a newer one that I actually didn't cop because I watched your man's like t- he he rated the top four. Right. And then like this one was only since last year. It's called the Summit. Okay. And it's like got an art installation thing inside it, so that's like sixty. I think. Mm-hmm. And so. From what I've looked at, the city passes wouldn't actually be that good for me. Right. Because I don't want to go, like, the one is like, oh, go to the Statue of Liberty. I'm like, Ugh. But then I heard you can actually get into, in one of the particular tours, you mm-hmm. can get into the crown of the Statue of Liberty. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, maybe I want to do that. Um, but I don't really, like, fucking Statue of Liberty, like, what the fuck? I'm not a fucking statue. <laughs> no, <laughs> none of them about it like, really was so- like... Oh my we, god, the Statue of Liberty. Like. We we went to the statue the first time and it was so busy. We didn't get the tickets to the crown because they were really expensive. We just did the plinth. So like see the bit that she stands on. Walk around, walk, yeah. walked around that. It's so narrow and it's full of tourists and it's full of folk and it was I, it wasn't me, like, it wasn't really worth it. Do you know what you're as well doing? Getting a Staten Island ferry Staten Island because ferry, it's free, free yeah. and it goes right past it. You can get so your I'm photo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Most, most of my trip is planned around Marvel and Pop Culture <laughs> So my before I actually got into looking into it, it was like we said later found it was Joel's Pizza it's in Spider Man Two, which actually isn't the one that's in the film because it moved around the mm-hmm. corner like two years later. Pizza's only supposed to be okay in comparison to other places there. Um Bleaker Street to see Doctor Strange's mm-hmm. well obviously the Sanctum Centaurum isn't real. <laughs> but that address is technically real because it's where fucking is it Roger Stern? No. Who was the guy who took over after the editor in chief after Stan Lee? Um. Oh no, but it, maybe it couldn't be because that's where Doctor Strange is. Does Doctor Strange always have the apartment of Bleak Street? One of them, are, I can't remember his name. He's the guy who became editor in chief after Stan Lee. Right. Um, first guy who took over from him, who was like his right hand man for many years. I can't think of his fucking name. Um, he used to live at, so there is an address there but it's like a tiny half tour mm-hmm. of a place mm-hmm. um yeah we, we walked past that the flat iron building that, that faherty faherty clothing company have a shop there on bleaker street right flat iron building for spider-man 2 the ghostbusters fucking ghost firehouse uh cafe from seinfeld apparently there's the one that's Talk. used for the external shot in the tv show right and then there's the one where it was actually larry david and jerry seinfeld planned out seinfeld so the discussion of I can't remember what one I went. I went to one of those. It was Tom's Diner. I can't remember which one that is, but Tom's yeah, Diner. One of the other. The, I think the, it's probably the, food, the real one. The food in Tom's Diner is great. Um, that's quite far up. That's quite north. Um, that's almost really? Harlem. Yeah, it's quite Fuck kind of up. north Manhattan. But um, oh, really? but it's great. Really nice. I got a salmon and cream cheese bagel, and it was banging. Yeah, uh, bagels, like yeah, like most of my money's gonna be spent on food. Like yeah. so, in terms of food places, there's near the Bleecker Street. There is um, there's also the Fens apartment that's down that way, and yeah. it's also very close to Quentin Tarantino's restaurant, which is a Korean barbecue place. Um, it's a Korean. Barbecue. Yeah, Korean barbecue place owned but by it's Antino. actually his restaurant. Yeah, yeah, he owns it. Yeah, yeah. I get you. And I you meant it was the team place. I was like, how is that? <laughs> Tarantino esque. Near um, the Flatiron Building, there's a place that does. I can't remember what it's called, but it does the the thing where you get the barbecue on the table and it brings you these incredible cuts of meat and you just cook them yourself however you want them. That's oh, banging so as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's near the Flatiron Building. We went there. Street food would be the main thing I'd be doing. Uh, oh, yeah, there's, there's great street food. I can just... follow a lot of Instagram pages, and your man recommends a lot of good stuff. Um, I would I would look up that place. I can't remember what it was called, but it was, like an, it was an old underground station, an old subway station, like it was abandoned or whatever, and it's just all food stalls now, and everything on it's incredible. Like, oh, they've got yeah. everything you can imagine. They've got American food and Japanese food, and that just and loads of done, Mexican the, stuff. Did you use the subway much at night? Um, we haven't used the subway at all. I've not been on sub in New York. Really? We, we just get taxis and walked. Fair enough. Um, yeah, because I'm hearing different things about like it's dangerous, not dangerous, from different people. Like uh, a guy I know from the Bronx who's actually making me a, 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 a the Banshee custom figure. Um, he was like, "Look, you can get on it." He's like, "The void eye contact." Well, the guy from the YouTube videos is like, "You're back to the wall. Just keep your wits throughout. You don't be listening to fucking headphones." Um, like, like you could get on it, like, because 
as far as I know, like if I get the thirty, if I get so I'll probably do two weeks, get the unlimited Metro card or something mm-hmm. card for, for thirty three dollars, and which is really handy for me now. Dollar, do, dollars and euros are neck and neck for like I don't know the first time in years. So like every time I see a price, I'm like I don't have to work anything out. Like I know what it is. Yeah. Um, well, not, not that much of a difference anyway. But like a subway journey then would like correctly cost me nothing at night mm-hmm. or. When I'm looking, even now, when I'm looking up like Lyft or Uber, I think I'm only looking up Lyft so far. It's telling me from so the main attraction I'm going to so far, and the only kind of technical Broadway thing I'm going to is a screening of Clerk Street that comes out before like two or three days before Clerks is actually that's on the 9th. I think it's officially released on the 12th, right? To be honest, I, ha- I haven't really liked Kevin Smith stuff in a while, I haven't seen this stuff in a while. I was actually looking up reviews for Red State, it seems to be kind of a fairly liked film for what it is like it's a bit odd like um but i love his fucking podcast he's really won me over in the last couple of years like i've listened to it whatever the fuck's called again fat man beyond yeah I've listened to it nearly not every week but i fucking love when i like it i really fucking like it um and then so there's that sorry that's that screening is on in the beacon theater so like I was looking up the price of that if I wanted to get like an Uber or Lyft from there. Yeah. I was getting quoted like fucking a hundred dollars or something. But I was like, oh, should they try and get for a night at least, maybe try and get a hostel in Manhattan? Or should I just go for Ubers? Or I don't know, because it works out roughly the same price. It's nice to have a nice to start off at least one morning or even two if I can get another night. Mm-hmm. Start off in Manhattan at the start of the day, because like there's other walking tours that start really early. So right. basically, yeah. So but I've been told Subway like the guy I know who lives there, lives in the Bronx, is like, you could get on a subway, be on it all week, not meet anyone. But he said, like, there's, like, crazy people, people muttering to themselves, mm-hmm. literally just dangerous people, like, uh, people trying to convert to Christianity, all this stuff. He's like, you could get on a subway. He said, like, there's five different types of people. <laughs> you could get on a subway every day for a week, not meet one of them. You could get on one day, meet every one of them. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I don't know. Uh, and, like, some people, a lot of people are saying, don't get it after 10. Look it up in different groups. People are advising me of different things. Um, so, yeah, that's the thing I'm not so sure about at the moment. But, like, look, I don't drink, so I'm not too pushed about not being out too late. Yeah. Uh, I might just chance it somewhere see how I get on, but, like, I don't know what hit. Apparently, crime has got worse since the pandemic, but still right. a lot of new, like, people saying online that it's like, oh, I did it all week when I was there, Grant. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's comparable to the London fucking tube, like. See, see I, I don't know, but, I mean, coming through Glasgow and going to New York it wasn't that much different in terms of seeing crazy people in the street and people on drugs and people on do you know what I mean it really reminded me of home yeah. to be honest in a lot of ways it wasn't like I think if you were coming from somewhere maybe a bit quieter and maybe a bit overwhelming but coming from somewhere like Glasgow or like you said like London it's not that far removed from that sort of same yeah and like Dublin you know. isn't like depending on where you go in Dublin to is dodgy enough like when I used to mm. work in Temple Bear there in the Tesco like We'd be getting we'd be getting addicts in all day trying to steal like constantly like even the lads one of the that I know still works there is just like oh, literally someone I don't know where they're trying to shoot up or something like just had her with at the tills like the last yeah night. so like I've seen it I'm not but like you know I don't know I don't want I know I kind of like the idea of just to walk around New York and some music though but apparently you're not supposed to really do that but uh, mm. uh, I don't and know. It, it, what most people are saying is like it's just a bit different if you're actually going there by yourself. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not to say I couldn't bump into people like doing walking tours and like I do know a couple of people over there, but I don't know anyone who lives in like Brooklyn particularly. So like Yeah. Like say the night I go to the Kevin Smith thing, that'd be a great night to meet nerdy people. Um and we're doing like superhero there's a super at least superhero walking tour I'm gonna do. Um which brings you to some <clears throat> bar that the fucking Marvel artists used to hang out in and like cool. you get the they give their drawings for free drinks and stuff, so like they're hanging off in the wall. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I've, I've discovered a plan to be able to try and meet Hugh Jackman, who's doing Music Man over there, which costs like two hundred dollars to go see it on Broadway, which I'm wow. not gonna pay. But apparently, he like reg. Like I found this other New York page, and someone was like, "I literally just met him because of this page." People telling me to go here to try and meet him, and apparently, he comes out to greet fans before and after the shows and does cool. like matinees and stuff. So, yeah, fingers crossed. A couple of weeks, love a snap with Wolverine. I'll be good. Um, yeah, so that's kind of that's the plan. I saw you for what maybe a week more or two. I'm not even fully sure. I have <laughs> two weeks of work left, so I've this weekend coming after next. 
and then I, I could from that point on I might not be back on the pod until I've been on my hub. What you mean? You're not coming on from New York. You're not bringing all your stuff with you and <laughs> taking a day to spend your yeah. I'm gonna bring it no, into, no I, commitment, get, honestly. I've been trying to get into myself is just to get into doing TikTok videos uh, under the Jared Noise name. Uh, we're going to do personal name. I tried there the last day. There's a guy I know who does it, and it's like it's like what's the film where some uh, sporting actor stole the show and he said and. The Marissa Tomei um, mm-hmm. in My Cousin Vinny and I was I was trying for about an hour maybe two to record a video about fucking Jason Lee and Mallrats and I <laughs> couldn't do it but it'd be cool to actually I was thinking of maybe like I'll do one for myself but for Pop Shock if we get TikTok going it might be fun just do little snippets and stuff the last recommendation before we move on I would say is go to Katz's Diner which is the diner from Where Harry Met Sally but genuinely yeah. Genuinely, besides the fact that it's in a movie, the food's incredible. The sandwiches in there are I insane. I came up. I seen that come up on my video. So I'm kind. Of, it's annoying. I keep like going to book something or like getting it ready to last go. Like not being indecisive. I have to get my head in the game now because I've got two weeks. I've got. I, I mean, I've got an old itinerary somewhere that I can send you if you want to have a look at something Definitely like we did yeah, yeah. and and give you an idea because yeah. that i try to do it for places obviously that are close to each other so you know if you might give you an idea of what yeah are, are so sort of within i haven't really planned out distance it. like i have a couple of distant points in the fucking um in manhattan but i i really want to do it like upper east side, upper east side. yeah i probably wouldn't even bother with up the north so i don't think yeah, that's uh, definitely the best way to do it time wise. Um, right, we after not have my dinner, so let's move on to the topic. Um, we're going to talk about the best and worst alien movies, not just alien as in the character, just alien movies in general. Because Nope is out this week, and what else were we going to say was there was another alien movie, Prey, just came out. So, um, week, yeah, yeah um, it feels like a good time to talk about alien films. Um, do you have do you have like a favorite alien film? Because I certainly do, and I wonder if it may be the same one. Um, because I mean, I know, I know, it's it's a quite a broad genre. There's a lot of alien movies, but for me, yeah. for me, nothing comes close to the thing. The thing is my all time favorite movie with an alien in it. Pretty good. Um, it's my favorite horror film ever, and it's one of just my favorite films ever. Um, the thing is a masterpiece, in my opinion. That's um, a great thing. Ting here um fucking like well, well no it's just the most recent in my memory but like a lot of these will come into both horror sci-fi mm-hmm. well alien i think it be called alien the genre i don't think so sci-fi i guess yeah you would, you totally know, some genre i guess yeah um yeah the thing is fucking unreal there's actually a i think it's a mezco i'm not sure what toy company but they have you know from the poster mm-hmm where it's just like the big light coming out of the face. Yeah, yeah. There's like the guy in that, but then they just have like the clip on. Like, ha, <laughs> that's cool. So it just, you can have the figure and he just looks like the... Yeah, the poster. poster. Um, I mean, there's, there's just, I'm not going to specifically go into every reason why I love the thing, but it's just such an iconic piece of cinema. Like everything from the, there's so much iconography, like the spider head and the the, the chest opening up when he goes to defibrillate him. And... Which, yeah, like they, it's like it's chest, then spider head like and like i think as someone was saying recently it's like you think it's just gonna go one thing but then it just mm. like, yeah leveling up and the fact that it was all obviously kind of practical effects of the day they've aged well it still looks creepy and gross and great yeah um yeah, from one, that thing where your man's where is it your man's been hit, hit by the head and he's also been hit by the hands or something one of them right. looks really bad um it's like where the body also, up or something it's also been hugely influential on like kind of just mystery kind of who done it type media. I mean, recently that Among Us game that was huge during lockdown that is essentially the thing. Like someone's a monster oh, yeah. and everybody has to work out who it is. Like it's just got that sort of. And what was that game we used to play in school? Was it Mafia? And you had to guess who was the or Werewolf, whatever. There's different versions of the uh, same game, but you have to guess who the who the, the villain is. Basically, there was yeah. there was that whole element of the mystery with testing the blood and ugh, it's just it's so iconic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Keith thing. David. Yeah, Keith David again. <laughs> nope, Keith David is a nope. Who is um, he? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah someone, someone commented on a thing and it was like, "Oh, who would you get to voice 
I can't remember some Marvel character or someone who doesn't have like a body of like Keith David. I was like, yes, Keith David is always the answer. He also has a great voice. Like he, I know he's done video games and stuff. He's a great voice. Anyway, um, yeah, no, I love I love the thing. So that's that's definitely my favourite. Um, I can kind of definitively say that. Although I do have a lot of other um, alien movies that which I love. Um, do you want to touch on one in particular? That uh, we go for one. I won't, we won't get much into the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, or no, not the first one. We'll pick the prequel. We won't get for, first. I just saw Prey at the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, weekend before. So I know you were talking about it last week. You didn't really like it. Um, we, I did. I was going the opposite way. I really enjoyed it. We spoke about it on for our consideration. Um, again, yeah. I'll link that episode. Oh, below. that's where it was. I thought, I thought it was on this. We did uh, mention it on this as well, but yeah. Oh yeah, I really enjoyed that, but. Not really the main point. I just thought it was very smart. Liked everything about it. Watching the Comanche uh, version, and yeah, I don't release know. release uh, the Comanche voice one though, like with the mouth movements. Because if you watch it Comanche, you've got the English mouth movements. With the like Comanche. CGI. I, I didn't know. Obviously. I don't know. I, I just know. I they they should have just made it in Comanche. I don't like, know Comanche, so but they couldn't do that. It's the budget. Eh, I would have been better. Uh, they should have. They should have. Arguably, they should have. But like, I wouldn't have been like. I think I was saying that in the chat. I was like. I wouldn't be able to watch it if it was in English. Like, cause it's not, it's the modern English. It's not, yeah. even though I guess the one yeah. we'd expect that was, is the, the Indian voice, or again, the American voice is actually kind of like, me, me and Courtney spoke about this one for our consideration, but that was one of my biggest issues. It felt like the actors in it felt like modern day Americans. It didn't feel like Americans all the time. And yeah, if it was in Comanche, I, that wouldn't have been a problem. But that's why I think like, I wouldn't listen to something that I wouldn't watch something that was dubbed in English. But the fact of it well, being dubbed in another language, I would. I don't think I'd have enjoyed it as much if I listened to it. But that was the point that I was. Moment. That was again though the one of the points I made last week. You wouldn't watch, as you just said, you wouldn't watch something. You wouldn't watch a Japanese movie with English dubs. So why would you watch an English movie with Comanche dubs? Like it just doesn't. I don't understand Comanche. And I don't know. Nah, just. The same but the, if the mouth doesn't line up with the audio, I can't. I can't do it. But not really watch. I'm, re- I'm more reading the subtitles. Nah, I don't know. It's not the same. It's not the same as watch because when you when you have English subtitles, you're then more focused on the image, and then you can notice it. But Comanche, I don't understand Comanche, and I'm reading subtitles. I not one point in the film that I go, oh, that didn't match up. Because it's the language I don't know at all, so mm. it, on, it honestly didn't. I didn't notice it whatsoever the entire film, I, and I was more, like I was even a bit pissed off because I thought I couldn't find the Comanche version first. I would not have been able to watch that with modern English accent. Yeah, I just wouldn't have done, I I would have really just liked it if I did, and I really liked it. I just because I seen the trailer, I was like, oh fuck this, but watching it, you I. Honestly, not for one second did I even notice. I I don't understand the language, so and I'm watching subtitles. I didn't pick up it at once. Not the point I was going to make. Predator. Uh, mm, so yeah. I, since then, I watched the first one, which I've only got into the habit of watching like once every one or two years in the last couple of years. And the second one, which I don't think I've fucking watched in a lot. Of, I don't know. I have very vague memories of the mm. it tailing itself in the bathroom. Um. Jesus, it's very good, both of them. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm not... I think I'll think of them three because I don't. I know people like predators, but like they're really fucking interesting. I like predators. Uh, I like predators. Yeah. I like uh, my it... my favorite predator movies are the first one and predators, pre and yeah. predator two. Yeah, and the, and the the um, Shane Black ones, Shane Black one. <laughs> yeah. What do you mention it? Uh, or EVP. Um, but. Like the first Predator, as someone was on about it, like they'd have it in their list for top five horror films, top five action films, top five sci fi films, mm-hmm. top five yeah, alien yeah. films. Like it crosses the genre. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it's so smart in so many ways. Like it's got it's got this whole like all of these big muscles, swiftly going on the first one, mm. all these big muscly fuckers don't matter a fuck. Yeah. Like even that big, uh, crazy Native American was just like, I'm scared. You know, <laughs> yeah. Probably in a sense of to do that kind of like that. But it's just, and the sweat and like everything about it, the technology, that shimmer effect. Uh, like, guy I like on YouTube is uh, Oliver Harper. Right. He does 
retrospectives and he does he's an English guy he's a really good English one of those really good English voices of just like uh, it just sounds really good when he's talking about films and stuff he does like retrospectives on a lot of the things he covers is like older films and then he does like he do commentaries on them too and he just knows loads of shit about films and it's just he has a very I don't know his voice is just good for talking about films mm-hmm. um, like the difficulties they had with shooting the original it's basically like the effects on the first Predator work so well because if you like were to see something like that in real life it'd probably work look like that because mm-hmm. like it's it's just it's just very well done. The design of the character, even though it was nearly John Claude Van Damme, yep. with a fucking weird bug outfit. Yeah, the weird. They yeah, yeah. Changed it while shooting, and then like, I was trying to explain to my housemate. He's like, his head is kind of, like there's these spiders we used to get in Ireland. I'm sure you got them in England too or Scotland. Um, garden spiders, where there were these kind of funky looking guys with big fat arses, big thoraxes, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. that same kind of acorn shape of the head. Yeah. And yeah. then it's got the mandibles, and then it's also got the kind of hair bits coming out, mm-hmm. and he's got kind of lizardy skin. He just looks so fucked. Like I was just thinking recently, I was like, "What I would have give to see that face reveal in the cinema for the first yeah. time as an adult, not know anything about it." Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know what's coming. It's crazy enough to watch as you're going, but then to see that face at the end, um, and really interesting. Some guy broke down all the the face prosthetics on each film. Right. So it got worse and worse and worse and less believable. Like in the AVP films, the mandibles are hanging way down. But in the first one, like they actually fully close up over the mouth. Yeah, well, people and are then... complaining about the, the, the face design in Prey. Um, I've heard people moan about that. But then the argument is that in Prey, it's evolved since then. So that's why it looks different. But people are complaining that uh, it's... I think I heard I it was too more, long. The face race. was too long. Or... Right, okay. Race. Right, because and it's also before the other one, so it hasn't evolved. Oh, it has evolved from what we've seen now. Is evolved, but there has. Been, I think it's been established there is different races of them. So like, I think even in predators, they've all some like some people are saying they're kind of like over designed and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was interesting that just like for the first predator the film, the mold was made with the mouth being closed. So when it opens out, it looks kind of natural. Right. But in the pre- next ones, then it was like just looks fucking like they gave him like weird. Like he's a weird. It looks a little bit like a vagina in his, in his inner mouth. Yeah. And in the later films, he just has like tiny little spiky teeth, and this is like he's smiling, which is kind of weird. Um, yeah, first film was great. I actually, funny enough, from watching the second one, Danny Glover, his character would give Dutch a run for his money because Dutch doesn't get any hits in on like like as mm-hmm. big as Arnie is. Johnny, he, he he punched him once and better like oh. And just slaps him but fucking Danny Glover like they, they fucking drag out fight with him like and he's like using the weird batarang disc thing to fight him and like yeah fucking really getting in there fighting him um, I think as a lot of people are saying you don't really get to know the other characters in the second film so that when they die it doesn't really mean anything yeah as much as it does the characters are more small and concise than the other one um, and the uh, you son of a bitch the handshake thing in the first one yeah. It's fucking brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. iconic. Yeah. That is, it's great. Uh, and just great, freaky ass design. Um, which, do you want to go for Alien? What's your think of actual Alien? Um, no, I mean, I, 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 love, I love the Alien movies, um, but it's never been one of my favourites. I appreciate from, it was a pioneer, you know, in the genre, and it yeah. kind of kicked off Ridley Scott's career in a big way, and it's iconic. I am probably one of the few people that maybe prefers the first film to the second film. Um, I look quite a lot of folk prefer Aliens. I love both of them. I think it's a shame yeah. that there's not been a good one since. But um, yeah, Aliens iconic. I mean, for me, it's more uh, the movie. It's the the claustrophobia of it. It's the design of the ship, the design of the alien, the yeah. uh, sort of everything that's going on in the background. What you don't really know. The way that it's basically just a, a stalker film like Freddy or Jason, but instead of being, you know, an undead monster, it's it's, it's a being from another world. So it's even more unpredictable, I think, because even like Freddy and Jason are kind of humanoid characters, whereas the alien yeah. is like a beast. You know, it's like a it's like an animal almost. Um, yeah, yeah. 
the thing, everything like with the face huggers and with the acidic blood, and it's just it's just cool. It's such a cool design, a cool character. The the suspense of it, the, the kind of the iconic look with the smoke coming down, you know, the corridors, and the, you see the tail, you know, moving around and stuff. Yeah, and yeah it's just I, I I love I love the the aesthetic of Alien, maybe more than I love the actual movies themselves. Um, but in terms of the movies themselves, I think the first one's my favourite. But um, yeah, both of them are iconic, and both of them still get you know aped and copied to this day. People still take influence from them, so it shows you yeah. how influential they were. Um, they can actually you know, they're, change they're, everything. So I've been watching. Like, I haven't rewatched. I, I think I've probably never really seen the Alien films properly until the pandemic. Like I've seen bits and bobs, but no memory of them. No working right. memory of them at all. Yeah. Just, um, but I watched one to three, I think. Okay. And maybe I did the same. Maybe I just did one and two again. But we're going to watch because after just watching Predator one and two, I'm not going to bother with Predators. I'm just going to either go to Robocop one again. Okay. I did a thing of like trying to just go back through all those good 80s films, yeah. 80s films, and like get them into my head. Get into like I, I guess they also kind of seen Robocop recently. The fucking score, like well, one thing these films have Alien, not so much, but like Predator and Robocop, mm-hmm. fucking fantastic scores. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. That I shared with like this guy, uh, I think it's Dark Knight Begins or something on uh, Instagram. He's a cosplayer. Like last year, does, does impeccable Batman costumes. They did an impeccable Robocop this year. Cool. And I shared the picture where he was meeting like um, I can't think of the guy's name, Robocop Murphy. Um, <laughs> um but, what's his name? Peter Weller. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the music I, I just shared it on Instagram. The fucking music is spot on. Um, Robocop, not an alien, so I'll get past that. But, pull it back a little bit. Aliens, what I think is interesting about it, because I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, you know, talking about fucking aliens and blah, blah, blah. And actually, Predator, I was recently reading, I didn't finish it. It's a Batman versus Predator book. Mm-hmm. Uh, really fucking good. Just feels like a Predator film, feels like a Batman story. Mm. At the same time. Um, but the alien, I think the interesting thing about them is, they're just based on this fucking creepy art by your man Geiger. Like, mm-hmm. that's, yeah. it was just some fucked up art piece he did. And like, then to put a lore behind that, the whole story behind Yeah, it. and have it work as well as it did, yeah. Yeah, but it's just interesting that this whole... They, they have to call it, let's call it Aliens. Alien and Aliens. Let's call it those two. Don't think about anything else after that. Yeah. Because uh, I was listening to some YouTube talking about the fucking prequels. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> so dumb. Oh, David made them. Oh. How the, the fucking oh. Prometheus garbage? Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't want to. I'm not even going to touch that shit. Um, but yeah, they're just so good. And then, like, um, when I was at Dublin Comic Con, there was a guy who was making. I might try and find his name before I finish talking about it. Um, there was a guy who was making these little. Uh, so he's an artist. So he three D displays. Right. But they're tre- sorry, three D printed displays. But he'd actually like done the designs himself, and he had some cool designs of uh, like Wolverine and Cyclops, basically facing off against aliens. Nephew, my youngest nephew, got talking to him. I didn't even, never had a clue how obsessed my nephew got with like my sister. <laughs> nephew didn't want to leave his stand. Your man was loving it too. Your man was having great chats. So That's cool. Uh, he's only like nine, but like he gave him a little piece of the one of his displays that had broke off, and he had to replace it in the display. It was a tiny little thing, but. Um, they just the two of them are basically just talking about aliens and like <laughs> what happens and like I was something I heard in the comic pop podcast was like what happens if a face hugger got into Wolverine right yeah yeah you probably you'd be able to get out for the healing factor but then you end up with an alien with a healing factor yeah uh, it's really quite interesting and would it I don't think it'd pick up any of the adamantium but they're fucking shells or yeah so protected it's yeah. metallic yeah so I literally heard someone describe it as metallic today but um. Yeah, it's just everything about them is just fucking... Like, oh, sorry. So this guy at the Dublin Comic Con was saying that technically they're not living because they need another host to... Yeah. And but that, was, that was his particular view on it, which is interesting. So, like, and also they have that... What's the word? It's uh, biomechanical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What yeah, because the, the kind of bi- biomechanical show. thing, I know that that's the kind of big thing in the tattoo world, it's like biomechanical art. And I think that a lot of that stemmed from Geiger and Alien films. You know, I think that's why it's popular. 
Um, there's also uh, there was a game there was a game that came out a couple of years ago. Um, Agony, yeah, it was yeah. called. No, it was called Agony. It was on. It was on Steam. It was one of the ones I downloaded and never really got round to properly playing. I think I played ten minutes of it, but had used a lot of that kind of HR Geiger. And there is also one coming out. Um, I can't remember when it's coming out, and I also can't remember the name of it. But it is inspired by Geiger, and it looks really cool. And it's got one name, like Scathe or like um, Agony. I can't remember what it's called. Hold on a second. Um, the guy from Dublin Company who's doing the 3D printed art is Ivan Landy Zero on Instagram. This is some cool. I have a snap of one of them here. A lot of cool displays. Scorn is the name of this game. Um, it's called Scorn, and it's based on the works of HR Geiger, and it looks really creepy and gross. We said, sorry, is that the artwork? Oh, that's cool. That's a diorama. Yeah, it's, yeah so, so that's tiny, like so right. Like okay. It's going up against aliens, and then he kind of has the reverse. The Robocop thing. It has a reverse move. Oh, that's cool. Is it the Wolverine? Yeah, it's the Wolverine one. Right. But then he's like, he's a built into like the Wolverine is kind of melted because of the acid blood, and then there's all these like alien corpses below him. Oh, that's cool. cool. Uh, yeah, really cool stuff. Um, but yeah, they're just there. It's a pity that, like, as that was in Predator 2, they had the alien skull, but then it's like. Alien Predator vs Predator Riddles are going to just shite. Yeah, um, yeah they were bad. But the game's all right. The there was one game, game that was quite good. Um, it came out for the PS3. I remember the green cover. It was called like Aliens vs Predators or something. Um, uh, that was quite fun. You got to play as a human. You got to play as a predator. You got to play as a alien. And uh, I think I might have actually got different. It was first person. It was all in first person. Yeah. Um, you could rip you could rip heads off with the spines as predator. You could use the tail to stab and spit acid blood as alien. And yeah, I think I literally had that on my PC. You, you know play as a soldier, but it was fun. Bring my Steam up here and see. Um, um, I can't remember so... who. It was maybe developed by Rebellion. I want to say. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of funny. Maybe 2010, 2011, something like that. Might have came out around about there. Yeah, but is there like is there was there sequels in that? That particular Aliens game, yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, that that was fun. I enjoyed that. Um, yeah. Other than that, I don't remember them being very good. The games, but I liked that one. Uh, yeah, was good. Um, ba, 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 ba. um I don't. Predator, thing, Predator, Aliens. What are we gonna? What else? What have you got? Just the, the next one I was going to bring up was you spoke earlier about movies where the kind of the alien or the beast or whatever as a creature isn't the actual main point of it when you're speaking about the zombie movies that are more kind of character oh, dramas yeah. set within that world. And we also just spoke about Prey, which was directed by Dan Trachtenberg. Dan Trachtenberg's first film was Ten Cloverfield Lane, and oh. I loved that movie. I did not expect to sort of feel the way I did about that film. I really, really enjoyed it. See the again, obviously it's set the Chlorfield universe, there's aliens out there and whatever and the invasion is happening, but the whole film takes place or near enough the whole film takes place within a small bunker. Um yeah. with three characters. Okay. It's based all around the, the other guy at all. Uh, sorry? The other guy? So, uh, so it's John Gallagher Jr. Um Mary Elizabeth Winstead and John Goodman. And but yeah Junior Heard of him. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Um, yeah, the three of them are, are, are in the basement. Um, you're not really sure what the situation is. The basement belongs to George, George Goodman's character, who's built this, and they sort of he's a sort of doomsday guy. And he's telling Mary Elizabeth Winstead that he rescued her, but you're not really sure if he did rescue her or if it's more of a kidnapping situation. Yeah. Um, John Gallagher Jr.'s character is a neighbour of his, but again, he sort of knows more about him than he lets on. And oh, Bradley Cooper's in it. Bradley Cooper's in it. Voice. Oh, cat is nice. I never knew that. Um, oh well, it, she has on. She has speaking to I think her partner at the start. She has a car crash, which is, and then she wakes up in in this bunker. Um, maybe he was. Uh, maybe he's the voice in the phone. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's just an incredible film. John Goodman's performance is insane. Like it's incredible. And the other, the other two are great as well. Mary Elizabeth Winstead's carries it as well. Okay. She's a kind of. Uh, what the fuck do you know this guy from? The John Gallagher Jr. Um, he's been on stuff. I can't really think it off the top of my head, Sorcerer but he has 12, been in other, other stuff. 
Um, but yeah, he's, he's great in, in Clover Lane. And yeah, again, I, I think that film, the reason I kind of like it so much when I think about it, I just, I remember going to the cinema and not really expecting, I had no expectations for it because the first Cloverfield movie was just an okay kind of found footage alien movie. Um, this was kind of, even though it was connected, it wasn't like heavily connected, it wasn't like a direct sequel. So I kind of went in with no expectations. I remember just walking out being like, I loved every minute of that. That was incredible. Um, I was very obsessed with Cloverfield just going the original, right? Just going by the trailer, I thought. Yeah, the trailer blew my fucking. When the Statue of Liberty, speaking of going to New York, when the Statue of Liberty's head flew onto that street, it blew my fucking mind. I was like, (laughs) "What the fuck is going on?" (laughs) Yeah, nobody fucks with her. The, it, it really the, blew my mind the marketing it. for that first movie was great because it was also, I think, one of the earliest like online marketing campaigns that I remember really being significant. There was all these clues yeah. and like hidden trailers that you had to go to certain yeah. links to find. And... A, it was literally just the "What the fuck did that?" <laughs> because it was it, it had an effect of last, where it's like you don't know what it is, and you're like, "What in the fuck?" That's yeah. crazy. Obviously, yeah. the first one had some weak spots where your man is like. This gigantic monster bends down to bite him and mm-hmm. then, like chew it up. The camera's yeah. just fucking floating around. The camera yeah. falls up. The camera's grand. I was hoping a bit for like, dude, you know, didn't need to be found footage film. Yeah, um, but so I don't, I don't hate the first one. I, I like it. It's an interesting experiment. It's not. Yeah, it's a weak point. But um, and then poor who's your one, Lizzie Chapman. I love her too. Yeah, but the the, the sequel, she explodes right. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this. this Clover Lane's just a great kind of. I, I love kind of claustrophobic, intense. The thing, I guess, is the same idea. This kind of like enclosed space that you can't really get out of because there's shit going on outside, whether it's the middle of the Arctic or whether it's the middle of an alien invasion. I like the idea of these characters kind of being forced to be together and not really trust each other. Meanwhile, there's a kind of bigger threat going on. You know, I get. I guess the thing in Clover Lane are kind of similar in that aspect. Um, but yeah, just I love that film. Yeah, one of my favorites. Um... Um, I was. Tr- yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it, but yeah, it's, it's not really. It's like, it's a again, it's a human story, and like, it's so yeah. funny. Then, like, that's these films in the last while watching them. It's so funny to think what put something into a genre, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like especially when you have a character, like when you have it, something like that, that the genre piece is so small. Yeah, but it's still then a genre film. Yeah, yeah, true. But um, there's not really the point. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was trying to sorry if you if you can give us another one in a wee second, but I'm just I was trying to think of ones that I, ha- I didn't like, um, but we'll we'll get onto that in a wee second. Man, Steve. <laughs> um, give us give us another one that another alien film that you uh, sort of hold in high regard. Put me on the spot. I thought I had a bit of time to think. Um, alien, alien. Oh, it's gonna be bad. It, 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 it's it's such a wide concept that you forget what actually is an alien. Yeah, okay, Independence Day. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Um, I used to. I, it was one of the first times I talked because the woman used to work in the cinema. Used to also work at her family shop. I got the poster from the cinema, right? But it was the poster of the three shifts, right? And I used to hang it on my roof, and it used to constantly fall off the roof. <laughs> Posters aren't designed to be hung off the roof. Really. <laughs> Just the weight of them naturally drags them down. Yeah. I, think I, I had many nights where I woke up with a fucking poster on me. <laughs> Uh, but great crack. Will Smith slapping aliens and it wasn't problematic at all. <laughs> it was a nice, was a back, a, a simpler time. Yeah, Will simpler Smith times. Could something and it wasn't, it didn't make you feel bad inside. Mm. Um, yeah, welcome to America and he's champing on the big fucking cigar. Yeah. And like Jack Oldblum. It's a Jeff Goldblum, like a couple of years after Jurassic Park, I'm assuming. I can't remember exactly, but I'm sure it's a couple of years after. I think mm. that's 97, maybe. No, yeah. Probably not that much difference. Probably like the next film he did, I'd say. Mm. Yeah, it could Close be. Um, the aliens were kind of cool. It was trashy. Look, I haven't watched this since I was a kid. It's probably really shit to watch now. See, I, I went uh, back not too long ago, and it didn't, yeah. it didn't live up to my memory. It was a bit probably quite, yeah, quite slow, and the actual alien stuff, not really that that prevalent until the very end yeah. and it's very 
almost kind of propaganda. You know, it's the kind of dumb disaster maybe at some parts, and it's about yeah. America, hell yeah, and it's I don't know, it's it's okay, it's okay. I, I like some of the design aesthetics. The sequel was garbage. My god, the sequel was shit. Oh, I think I knew it. I think I knew ah, it. garbage. Um, that's uh, that's resurgence. Independence Day resurgence has got to be one of the worst. You know, that's I think that's on there for the for some of the worst. Oh. I forgot one, so I just going to double barrel. That was kind of just the time filler one. Arrival. Yeah, yeah, Arrival was up there. Brilliant. Yeah, unbelievable. Arrival was great. Unbelievable, Jeff. <laughs> um, who's the fucking director? Denis Denis Villeneuve. Ah, sure, look. Yeah, um, yeah he's, where, where, the, where, the guys. The guy's not made a bad film. Um, that's the thing. Oh, you have to go back and watch his earlier, like Incendies. When you look at, like I, I've I've seen Incendies. I've not seen. There was another one I've done early doors that I've not seen. But Enemy, um, Prisoners, Arrival, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I wasn't big on Dune. I thought Dune was okay. Um, yeah, but the, the point is, the guy, the guy just makes incredible films. Um, and yeah, Arrival was. It's not everybody's fate. It's not everybody's. Uh, quite a lot of people list that as his worst film. I still think it's a great film. I don't know if it's. I, personally, I think Prisoners is my favorite of his. But um, just just the, the 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 atmosphere that was built in Arrival and the whole it felt realistic. Like the way they were going, to, the way they were tackling it, going to speak to the aliens, yeah. to try to communicate, and then obviously the twist at the end was really really enjoyable. It's fantastic. Uh, I love Amy Adams. She's great. See, um, I'm not going to lie. I don't. I don't dislike her necessarily. I just think she's a wee bit overrated. And this maybe I thought she was a great arrival. She really kind of won me over. He's not like Amy Adams. Yeah, I think she's fine. I think she's. I think she's a bit overrated. Exactly. I don't think she's great. No, she's fucking great. I love, just, her. Uh, I love her personality. Um, I just think she's very. Um, I don't. Know what... She was a bad Lois Lane. Um, <laughs> Those films are fucking a like crime to cinema. Um, but no, she's great. In her, she's great in Arrival. She has great, great in fucking actress. <laughs> One thing to talking about Prey, but not fucking Amy Adams, <laughs> right? I won't, I won't hear any of it. Um, I just thought it was fucking great. I like the little the concept a film where it works like that, where it's like a thought mm. that makes you think about. It. I can't fully fucking remember it now, but there's like there's a bit of like pseudoscience being worked out on screen, mm-hmm. and like there's a twist. Uh, it's interesting. There's a sadness to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucking our boy Hawkeye coming in, fucking back. The, there's also a bit of like government decisions overriding what is really yeah. the right way to approach things. But hey, we need to answer yeah. to someone, and yeah, there's a lot of that kind of going on, um, hierarchy yeah. and stuff. But yeah, yeah, I just thought it was great, uh, and I loved it. Didn't even know Kent. Now again, Doom didn't do much for me, but. Uh, mm. um, uh, I wouldn't hold that against him. He's a fantastic filmmaker. Dune, Dune um, wasn't a bad movie. It just no, it was like fucking dry. Yeah, if you're into Dune, I'd say you'd probably love it. But I'm not. It's just mm. I don't know. Even yeah. more boring Star Wars. <laughs> I know. Um, fuck Star Wars. I know it's technically a fucking alien film, but I'm not going into it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I didn't think of Star Wars. Oh, that's his own. That's his own genre. Fuck it. Guardian. If we're doing fucking Star Wars, we're doing Guardians of the Galaxy. Well. The no, next, do the one that I was going to bring up has been one of the worst alien films I've ever seen, and I, you might think this is a bit of a stretch, but that Venom sequel, the, the, Let There Be Carnage, ah, or whatever it was called. Shit talking, Jesus Christ! From here on out. Right, okay, even, okay, let's not even go there. Right, okay. So, okay, then my final good film that I'm going to speak about, Alien Wise, District Nine, is one of the greatest, oh, great. greatest films great of the last film. twenty years. I mean, um, yeah, Neil, Neil Blomkamp just absolutely knocked out of the park with his first film. Um, Shalto Copley's performance is incredible. Like it's up there with Kurt Russell's performance in the thing. Um, the way that he carries that film. The spoilers, I guess that's a twenty year old, ten year old film, but whatever. Um, the transformation, the way that that takes place, it's 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 a little bit Cronenberg. There's a kind of elements to the fly. Like I remember that. I remember. Oh, yeah, it's fucking horrible. That I first. That first I moment. Seen it in years. See the first moment where they cut cut his cast yeah. open. He's got this cast on his arm because he breaks his arm or something, right? And then they cut the cast open, and he's got a claw. You know, the claw comes out the cast. I remember that first moment, just being like, "Oh, this is this is this is up there with the fly. Like this is up there with Cronenberg mm-hmm. stuff." Yeah, What's up? Yeah. 
Like, sure enough, when you actually Google aliens on them, both of them. <laughs> um, yeah, but this, and I also love the kind of, again, I, don't, I, I guess this is maybe summing up my taste in a way, because this shit nine, even though even though it's very clearly an alien film about aliens, it's more to do with the sort of social political side of how humanity would handle aliens being here. It's obviously an allegory for like mm. the the lower working class, um, how it's kind of living a slum and almost there's almost kind of like slavery things as well, references and stuff. Um, you know, with the way they're called, they're referred to as prawns, which is also like a kind of derogatory term for them. Yeah. Um, you know, not giving not giving them the real kind of name of their species and stuff. There's, and then obviously the fact it's in South Africa, which is already a super kind of high tension boiling point when it comes to things like you know political things and race and gender and you know sexuality and all that stuff that goes on in South Africa. Introducing an entirely different alien species just makes it such a kind of interesting melting pot to to see. And then the idea of just a, a ship dangling over a major city because they don't have yeah. the fuel to leave so the aliens don't want to be here the humans don't want the aliens to be there the way it's told kind of semi-documentary style at the start i love that the, the way that it's like someone's doing a, a documentary about the office that um the character works in is it wickis or rickis um they're kind of going through i don't know i actually probably haven't seen it since it came out they're going through his day and the, the 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 news reports and stuff that you see and then there's just it, it goes so dark so quick like there's that moment where they're sort of test they've, they've got vicus in the lab and quite an interesting element is that the guns only work if they're used by an alien the alien weaponry can't be used by humans because it's to do with biogenetics and stuff but because he's been infected by this thing and he's becoming an alien he can fire the guns so they're actually making him do target practice on like live aliens and stuff and even though vickis starts the movie again we spoke about sam rockwell earlier transforming his character in three billboards and how you didn't feel like it was earned but in this movie Vickers starts off thinking of these prawns as you know just the prawns whatever they're just these horrible creatures you know they're not real you know cute human people they're just they're just things to be messed with and experimented on and then by the end of the movie you know he's helping out this this specific um alien and his, his child get back to the ship and stuff you know and he, he really comes to care for the aliens and again the way that that transformation happens it's believable but it's also a case of seeing things from their perspective you know from he goes from being this kind of suit and tie corporate type to walking away in their shoes i guess and kind of seeing how how they were you know how it looks for the other sides and yeah it's just it's a brilliant film it's a phenomenal film. Yeah. It's it's a shame that Blomkamp hasn't been able to recreate that success since. I really do I feel like... A to go into, he was so close to getting into Aliens. Yeah. Alien. I feel like that was really the high point for him because I, I didn't hate Elysium and I didn't I really didn't like didn't Chappie. To be honest, I wasn't a fan of Chappie. Didn't see that but um, yeah, Dish and is incredible. What a film. Okay, um... A couple here I didn't even think of. It's funny when you actually Google it and you do get like some of the Avengers films coming in, and mm. even like I'm surprised like X Men Dark Phoenix got into it. But like, I guess yeah. Sp- Space Jam's here. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I guess Space Jam. Uh, so two, well, no, two really good ones. But I've a, I've a couple more that like I was like, oh, how would I not think of that? Actually, not a lot. When I actually go and Google it, uh, not a crazy amount comes up that I didn't think of. But one of my favorite films. Uh, just I haven't watched. I don't think I've rewatched it since. It's fucking horrible to watch. At the same time. Uh, What's that? It's amazing. It's probably shot in Glasgow. I think. Uh, oh, under the skin. Yes, under the skin. Yeah. Fantastic film. Yeah. Horrible to watch. Horrible. <laughs> Haunting. Yeah. Fucking horrible. But such a fucking well-made film. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, where's that from? Unbelievable, Jeff. It's from an ad or something. Um, I think it originated from Match of the Day, and then I think it became an advert and yeah, over right. here from Ben. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Uh, like real actors, you are real people used as actors. Uh, some guy in particular, like has like a facial deformity yep. and stuff, and like was approached. I I I can't remember exactly. I think it was approached while they were filming. And yeah, asked, would he be in it? And like, I don't know how much planning was gone into that. I'm sure. And then like Scarlett Johansson just being. Like, she didn't really have much to do in it, but she was horrible. 
Oh, when she left that baby on the beach. That's oh, a, that's, 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 that's a hard the scene. Horror of that. That's the horror of that. And not even that, it's like... What is it again? She, she just like attacked the husband from afar or something. Or she clubs the husband. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Where is he? How did, that, how did that get to be? Oh, I can't remember. It's been so long since, since I've seen him. But it... And then there's like the guy who's going around the motorbike, who's a real yeah. motorbike guy, who's like a scout for the aliens. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of doesn't he do this thing when he's standing still where he's kind of just like turned around or something? Yeah, he's a wee bit kind of robotic. Something. Yeah, yeah, he does something weird. There's just something just, like, off about him going around the motorbike, like, yeah, yeah, um, fucking hard. Like, I wouldn't even say much more about it. Just it's not even like even if none of the things we said, it's more you're just following them. Well, again, following her. The, the only thing that I will say about it, uh, we're kind of speaking to these movies where a character goes through a transformation, and I feel like. Johansson's performance in this really sells that. You know, she goes from being from being this kind of heartless, robotic, drone-like cannibal, you know, whatever you want to call her, to kind of starting to get an idea of what it actually means to be human. But then the way she's treated by the humans is ultimately the downfall, I guess. Yeah. Um, Maybe I can go into too much. It's one of those films. It's very arty. It's not if you're going into something for something. So, it's not like fucking. What's it, Lucy or whatever? The, yeah, oh, Jesus. There's no big action. It's, it's very slow moving. Apparently, it's very different from the fucking play that it's, our book is based on. Something, it takes a lot of liberties. It's something else that I feel like was well done, even though it didn't really affect me in this way because being from Glasgow. But the way that, obviously, Scott Jazz is this kind of Hollywood actress, the way that she's when she's speaking to these people, because like you said, quite a lot of them aren't actors, so they're speaking, mm. they're probably speaking not even as clearly as I am at the minute, you know, they're, they're just in their own accent, they're just talking like, it's just in the road, you just turn a corner down there, you, you find a wee show up now, you go there, and it's all this kind of like dead quick, short dialogue, which you just, which I hear every day, you know, what about Glasgow, but it gives you the perspective of being an alien in another world, do you know what I mean? Because if an American person, for example, watches Under the Skin, they probably won't understand a lot of the, yeah, even even though it's it, the yeah. same language technically, but the accents, you know, it's it's so kind yeah. of distant and stuff, um, it kind of puts you in her shoes in that way. So there's just there's so many kind of small touches like that in the film that just, and the cinematography, yeah. the cinematography is great, the lighting is great. The, the void scenes are, are awesome. haunting I, I, and incredible, it, yeah. Like. Most films, it, it, like I used to always say, it, a, a, the sign of a film that I really like is going to be a film that I'm bored fucking shitless about halfway through it. Mm-hmm. Though I love just fucking meandering films, but as long as they get a point in the end, I'm like, whatever, yeah. Fucking great film. Like, it's not, it's, because it's, I was thinking when, we, when I when I threw in Independence Day, I was like, oh, that's kind of going for the schlock answer, but that's, and like, I guess this next one then would be also quite highbrow, and quite fucking creepy, uh, and quite recent. Uh, Annihilation. Annihil- I was going to bring up Annihilation. Um, yeah, I love that film. What's the crack? Is it the writer of Twenty Eight Days Later directed it, but he also wrote this? And it's basically- so it's it's Alex Garland who worked on Sunshine and Twenty Eight Days Later. Yeah. Uh, yes. He uh, started directing. He made Ex Machina, and he made that recent film Men, which I've not seen yet. The Rory <gasps> Kinnear. Oh, that's him. Yeah. Um, and he made that TV show Devs, which again I've not seen Devs, but oh right, yeah, I've seen Devs. Love Ex Machina, and I love Arrival. Uh, sorry, Arrival. Um, Annihilation. I right, I thought I can't even remember much about it. To be honest, with you. fucking Facebook. <laughs> it got three out of five on Facebook. <laughs> wow. Eighty-eight percent Rotten Tomatoes. Um. I thought fucking Tessa Thompson was in. Oh, she is. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. Um, yeah, I loved, I loved everything about it. But I, I liked the idea of how it was like the men had went in, and then this was the female scientist going in afterwards, and sort of seeing what had happened to to Oscar Isaac's character. And then again, I don't want to go into full spoilers, but there's a wee twist at the end, yeah, which I love I that. To watch it again, which I fucking it's, it's the gonna, the like, final. Monster. It's one of those movies that I was really enjoying it all the way through. It was it was pretty good. And then there's oh. one wee twist at the end which made me go, uh, you, oh my you god. froze there this... from my view. You... Let me see. No, it's still recording. Your voice is caught up. Oh yeah, you just you froze and then like right. it happens sometimes all your voice comes in at once. That's so, weird. Uh, um, Oscar Isaac. Yeah, yeah I'm just, I'm just saying like her obviously looking for, for a partner and then it was a great film all the way through. I was really enjoying it. But there's one wee moment at the end which is sort of a wee twist and when that happened, it just it put the movie up to like a uh, just incredible. 
incredible. And I was, and everything kind of makes sense in hindsight, just by using one wee technique at the end. And I was like, that is genius. That yeah, wee touch really, really is just so back. clever. Do you know what? Actually, that make a great triple threat. Uh, fucking arrival, annihilation, and under the skin. Yeah. Three really arty sci fi female leads. Um, oh, there's one. There's like Prospect something. It keeps coming up. I think I've, I think I've tried to watch it like three times and fall asleep when I'm watching it. I think I might have even finished it once. I just don't remember what happened with it. Right. But it's Oscar. It's not Oscar Isaac. Who's the other guy? Um, it's right, the other guy. I don't even think Oscar Isaac is Mexican, is he? Um, Mando. Uh, Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Uh, he's in something called Prospect something. Right. And just quickly. Oh, I've Netflix, seen the poster. I've seen the poster. On Netflix, there's one called Sputnik, which is basically. It's like. It's like a retelling of Alien. Right. But it's also like a retelling of fucking Venom. It's like, I don't know, it's just a little alien and he turns out to be a little prick. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just a, it's a good sci fi film, but it's like a very it's nice. Uh, I think fucking Ryan Reynolds. I'm right in thinking it. Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Gosling are in it. No, Ryan Reynolds and Mysterio, Jake Gyllenhaal, mm. uh, are in it. Life? Is that life? One no. of them is... Oh, that is life, isn't it? Life is... is very similar. Right. Sputnik is like... It's very like... It's like, you know, when you see people getting like... Going to the AI-generated art and go, make this, and then a few things. Uh-huh. Very similar. So both of them are like... Oh, it's like Alien. I'm actually... Yeah, Sputnik is just a little bit different, but it's very similar. Um, I hope I hope it's better than life because life was shite. <laughs> I like life. Did you? Uh, ah, was that fun? What was the other one we were talking about? Alien. Dash at nine. No, I mentioned. I said something. Under like the something skin. Like, no, it was one that I listened to on my list here. Annihilation. Under the skin and the rifle. No. Um, one last one that I'll just touch on actually while we're here. Um, I get the other one that I'm. Of. Edge of Tomorrow's a great wee film. Um, it's oh uh, yeah, I guess yeah. Again, it was it's more blockbustery. But what I liked about Edge of Tomorrow was it was just a, again it was a surprise. Like I was, Tom Cruise was going through this kind of phase where he was making like that movie Oblivion, and then they made like a few other kind of forgettable action sci-fi films. And this was kind of in amongst that, but this had something else to it where it had the sort of Groundhog Day thing where lived I repeat and stuff and. Uh, this kind of hive mind idea that they were trying to take this thing down, which it was just there's there's lots of cool wee twists in it. I like the mech armor that they use, and yeah, it's just a oh, fun film. Cool. Emily Blunt's great in it as well, and yeah, it just one was a solid film as well. Yeah, uh, well, I guess I'm surprised you didn't think of this one already, but uh, oh, something all popped into my head. What is that? Oh, sorry, <laughs> again, the backlog of like 80s films, ET. I never really cared about it. But, nah. You know, whatever. Yeah. Um, Tremors. Was they aliens? Uh, they aliens? Are <laughs> like they aliens? Are they aliens? I can't remember. I don't even know. Um, fucking. Do you remember the ones where there were like little gremlin? There were like little hedgehogs with the big sharp teeth. Remember? Um, Attack the Block? No. No, the Critters. Well, that's another one. That's pretty decent. I've not There's seen. One Critters. I've not seen was Critters. Like an 80s or 90s one, and I not just remember that. we always watched this when we were kids. Mm. It was like a they just had like big mounty teeth and they used to roll around in balls and then like they'd just chomp your foot off. Very trashy 80s right. or 90s stuff. Good crack at the time. Um, I think that could be it. Uh, yeah. Like what else could we possibly? Be? Like I'm sure. Like, one more Google. I would say the superhero movies like. I'm scrolling through here and it's like yeah, yeah, they're all superhero movies, the know? Suicide Squad and Infinity War and stuff and it's like well yeah but no <laughs> top 10 uh, Event Horizon that was a pretty cool horror can I uh, Event Horizon it's based in Aliens though is it? Sorry? Or is it aliens? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Event Horizon. I mean, it's it's alien. It's kind of Space like goals. a hell dimension. And then there's also kind of... Yeah, I don't know. It's it kind of inspired Dead Space. Um, Dead Space probably wouldn't have happened without Event Horizon. And um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool film. Uh, what is it? The Day the Earth Stood Still. We're not that old. War of the Worlds. That's fucking great to listen to that fucking uh, in school. Listen to that fucking radio play. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the Tom Cruise one wasn't all bad. Oh, nah, Spielberg film wasn't great. Uh, oh, what's the other one that's like Spielberg but wasn't Spielberg? Uh, eight. Super Eight? No. Yeah. Not seen that. Forgettable. 
Um, Starship uh, Troopers is on here too. That's a, if you're uh, if you're looking for something trashy, um, yeah, but kind of classic. I wonder if the sequels still go for the um, still go for the satire. Yeah, or yeah, I hope so. Stupid. Yeah. Spiders are all right, I guess. It's alien. It's a bit fucking. James Gunn likes the trashy. Suicide Squad actually just come up on this list here. Event Horizon just came up. I just want to see if there's anything that we missed. Evolution. They're not aliens though. They're evolved. I can't even remember. No. Uh, Cloverfield. Men in Black. Down. So I have a list here of oh, Men in Black. I've seen that. Oh, it's Signs. Yeah. Back to the, it's a great film at the time. But like, yeah. I really bear, so I know. Starman. Pitch Black. Is that Jeff Bridges? It is. John Carpenter. John Carpenter, Jeff Bridges. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Then, the first time for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They Live. I only watched that recently. Didn't like it at all. I like The Live. I mean, it's dumb and cheesy, but. Hmm. Uh, E.T. So just a Molo, Bubble Cop. Don't Cop. Stitch. Uh, Starship Troopers. And so I'm just, I just got a list here of 41, and we've covered most of them. Pitch Black. Is that the fucking Vin Diesel? Yeah, that was okay. Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I just Venom. Mars Attacks. That was a great film. And I don't think it did. I think it was like, did terribly, critically, and in the box office. I liked it when I was young. I've not seen it in years, to be fair. Yeah, I liked I it when I was young. Great. Uh, great cast stuff. Uh, Contact, No Memory of It, District 9, Day Live, it's gone up twice now. Life, Pacific Rim, haven't seen it. Seen bits of it, I've not seen it all the way through. Space Jam, Attack the Block, Best of the Block is great. Men in Black, first one in Black is really good. Absolute muck tip. Uh, Annihilation, Paul, fuck that. Fucking, what was it, like Seth Rogen and. Yes, I'm pegging Nick Frost. Written by yeah. Seth Rogen or Muppets from Space. I haven't seen 1999. Never even heard of it. Actually, just been through Galaxy Quest. Only seen that. I've not seen two it. Years. No, I've not seen Very it. Very good. Very good. So basically, it's kind of like what seems to be what the Orville are doing now. Yeah. Well, that's actually the last one there. Uh, so I think we've covered them all. Uh, well, not really, because the Orville started off as a comedy, but now it's just turned into being actually good Star Trek. Film. Oh, has it? Right. Star Trek show. Um. Is that new Star Trek show? I'm not, I've no interest in Star Trek. Uh, nah, me neither. Oh, I, like uh, I, I like the Chris Pine movies. They were okay. All right, yeah. But I mean, like, I don't know. Boring old fucking Star Wars. Boring. It's boring Star Wars. I find Star Wars boring enough, so. <laughs> uh, that's all I'll say on that. Um, yeah, that's a lot. Like, um, yeah. I think, I think we won. We won. Yeah, there's there's some there's some good good films we've covered there and good recommendations if you've not seen. Yeah. I, like most of them are like if you like you probably haven't seen you've seen probably most of them if you haven't. We at least mentioned something you haven't seen in long enough. It's well worth rewatch. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, now that we've spoken about them, I want to go and rewatch like half the films yeah, like Dash at Nine and now. stuff. I'm like I'm going to watch that. District but. Nine. Uh, I have a feeling that's under two hours. If I can find something that's under two hours, it's at half nine now. I have to be in bed by 22. So it's like, <laughs> I always time it out. I'm like, what gives me eight hours sleep? Yeah. That's the time I'm going to sleep. Well, I've eaten now. I don't need to do anything else. I'm no. I'm all ready for bed. I, I, do, um, I do need to go and eat. So I think I think we should hmm. probably call it there. Um, yeah. But yeah, thanks yeah, for thanks coming on, Jared. Um, no you yeah. can catch, like we said, we'll link a link last week's episode in the article below if you want to hear more about DC stuff. I'll link my review for Rollerdrome below, and I will also link references to all the other stuff we spoke about. Mm. Um, subscribe really to the. Ch- you got to catch up on our Instagram posts because I haven't posted anything in a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of, we're getting some views. So. Speaking of, um, give us a give us a like on Instagram. Do you like stuff or do you follow stuff? Whatever you do on Instagram, you like, you follow. Do that shit. Do it on Facebook, give us a like and a share and a follow and like the video on YouTube, leave us a comment and let us know your favourite Alien films, let us know what you thought of Nope if you've seen it. Um, nope, the trailer's really good, the most recent trailer's like, nope, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a, that is a great one. That is like film. just the sign of Nope. Um, um, yeah, but yeah, like and, and stay, stay tuned, stay tuned for, for our consideration because me and Courtney will do an episode on Nope, which will probably be going up a few days after this one does. Um, yeah. yeah, subscribe to the podcast feed, leaves a review in podcast catchers, Spotify, and Amazon, and Apple, and whatever yeah, else you listen to us on. And Hi, Bert, if you're listening, my, my buddy who I gave a shout out like about two months ago was like, 
she texted me the other day. I was like, oh, I seen the episode where you said hello to me. I was like, yeah. In fact, that was fucking two months ago. <laughs> uh, he's very excited that Tom Cruise or that Top Gun is doing so well. Oh, I'll... He just loves Tom Cruise, though. Uh, I do. I do love. Got, I do love Maverick. Just past Titanic, and it's only like right. sixty million away from Infinity War. Wow, Jesus! Yeah, it's like, fucking crazy. Like I just, you kind of think one of his films would have got that close before. I yeah, think, yeah. Like, it's just funny that like, yeah. you know, you think film. he'd yeah. be the, if this is doing this well. Why didn't like Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible, yeah. or something? I guess there, there's a lot of baggage to them. He's better off doing like this is a film. Yeah, and apparently he is. He's going to work with the Top Thunder guy uh, to do things. But look, you got to eat. No, um, cool. I got to eat these nuts. Get us. Um, <laughs> catch yeah. us next week. We'll be here to talk about some something else. But we haven't decided on a topic yeah. yet. But I might we'll, be back next week. Yeah, we'll be here. Um, what is there any movies coming out this week? Try to think that I just said when we yeah, she hope maybe out. Um, I no, I think it got delayed like two days, so it's right. Really okay, it, it, it could actually be just coming week. I, sh- I should really finish Miss Marvel, but anyway, with all that said, yeah. um, yeah, follow us, like us, share us. Thanks for watching, all the best. See you next week. See um, you on the next page. See, see you on the next page. That's it. That's it. I was trying to remember that. Yeah, happy maybe. Ha- oh, yeah, yeah, happy birthday, Massimo. Right, cheers. Good night. Good night.